Hello, everyone out there in Radio Land. It is once again that time of the week. What time of the week is it? Well, it's that time of the week where we dig underneath the headlines. We call out the establishment on its BS. And, you know, just in general, we make sure and tell you that straight up truth. This is the Hood Rat Strategist radio program only on 89.1 WIDR Kalamazoo. Now, as always, the following thoughts, views, and opinions are not those of 89.1 FM WIDR Kalamazoo or Western Michigan University. Uh, No matter how dope or insightful they may turn out to be. So... Uh, I want to start by saying welcome back to all the students uh, from the winter. Uh, We've been off for the last two weeks for the holidays. I hope y'all had a great time. Uh, Hopefully you didn't have too many conservative aunts, uncles, parents uh, to deal with and try to demagify. Uh, It's a tall order these days. Um, I'll tell you, especially with uh, uh, some of the recent news, I have been seeing a lot of... What uh, you know, logic gymnastics from that group of people, especially in, in regards to something that President Trump once did. But you know, I don't. It's the holidays. It's a quiet time. You know, there's usually not that much going on. It's not like you know we have to worry about. It's not like some big story happened, like World War Three or something. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I had to tell the most obvious joke first. Uh, you know, laugh to keep from crying. A little bit of that. So, so yes. Um, originally, we wanted to kind of this the format of this episode to be a retrospective where we would take a look at uh 2019 potentially the last uh, decade it's in the, in the you know the 2010s um so a couple of notes on that um with our decade retrospective what kind of ended up happening i reached out to the community it's basically like hey what are some of the big events that happened here locally and at the national level that you think we should talk about on the show? I ended up getting a pretty extensive list on top of the, the stuff that was already kind of germinating in my head. So I think what we're going to end up doing uh, instead, uh, and again, we got to talk about this a little bit more, but uh, we'd love to do kind of maybe like a monthly series where we dig in to the decade past. Uh, Not necessarily set up year to year or anything like that, but really just especially looking at the local stories, um, you know, my my uh, my brainstorm ing went uh, went went uh, went to bouncing. And uh, that is essentially kind of like what I came up with. I think uh, there's just too much to go over for even a single episode if we really want to do the last decade justice, because heck. A lot of stuff happened. It's kind of like that linen quote, you know. There are, uh, you know, there are weeks where decades happen, and there's decades where um, uh, nothing happens. And it's like there were a heck of a lot of decades packed into last decade. I will tell you what. So uh, we're gonna put that uh, not necessarily on the back burner, but we're gonna try to come up with a, a format to uh, really do that kind of project justice. I don't think it can just talk about the entire decade in a two-hour span, especially deep diving on some of the issues that uh, a lot of our local organizers, activists, um, and elected officials could really uh, shed some insight on. Uh, We will be doing a retrospective on 2019. That's how we're going to be spending most of the second hour, and uh, kind of the way that's going to flow is uh, we're really not necessarily the biggest stories, but... um, Especially talking about uh, stories that were very, very important, maybe didn't get enough coverage, or were covered in a way by the mainstream corporate capitalist media, uh, in a way that is like kind of um, incorrect. Uh, thinking prominently, uh, one of the things we'll be talking about in the second hour is the return of uh, Latin American coups against socialist countries. Uh, and then uh, this first hour, uh, so as I cheekily alluded to, a lot has happened in the last week. You, usually New Year's kind of quiet. Although, if you actually you really notice, um, especially during the Trump presidency, it's it seems like uh, as of January 2nd, there's always some outrage or huge story that uh, President Trump 
and uh, the rest of his cabinet like to throw at us and freak us out with. And in this particular year, it is the conflict with Iran. Oh, boy. Uh, so... We're going to be spending the first hour talking about that, and then um, at 6.30, we're going to be interviewing a local organizer about Project X. That's going to be Jacob Mabry. He'll be coming on the show at 6.30 p.m. So I think what I'll do, you know, before we really start going into the nitty-gritty, I want to mention a couple things about Iran. Um, So... uh, uh, Oh, actually, I believe that's my co-host. Hold on just a second. I will be right back. Oh, hey, I'm back real quick. It's actually our uh, our our 6:30 guest came a little early, uh, joining us. Uh, and uh, I think before we dive in, dive in, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, we'll start out by playing an interview I did earlier today. And this is with um, an organizer who is putting together a march uh, right here on campus. It's gonna be this weekend. If I pull up my events here and. Uh, uh, essentially, in in response to what is going on, going down with the Iran situation, so uh, we're gonna air a quick interview with him. And uh, when we get back, I'm gonna go in a little bit of the nitty gritty. I think the way we're gonna break this down, just because it is a very dense topic, and you know, frankly, when you when you start talking about the history of relations between America and Iran, like I, you know. I could probably do a lecture. Not that y'all would really want to tune in for for that. Uh, maybe maybe some other time. So we'll go ahead and play this interview, and then I want to just kind of address um, probably just the main media talking points that, that y'all are hearing out there, and try to try to get some uh, get some truth up in that uh, that uh, propaganda sandwich. Uh, <laughs> uh, at least offer a healthier alternative. So uh, again, this uh, this interview is uh, with Andrew Lucas. And I'll go ahead and just get it going. Excuse me. Sorry, folks. I got (laughs) to... It's a different app. I use my phone recorder, not the other thing. (laughs) 
as you can tell, uh, this is a very professional show. Uh, <laughs> Uh, we have a whole staff that uh, makes sure that... Uh, oh, yeah, here we go. Hello. Uh, hello, is this Andrew? Yes, it is. Uh, hello, this is Andy from the, the Hood Rat Strategist uh, radio program. Uh, thanks again for offering to sit, take some time to uh, uh, chat with us for a second. Yeah, thank you for having me on. Oh, yeah, no problem. So uh, we're going to be spending some time on the show kind of deep diving in some of the uh, kind of nuts and bolts politics around this. But I wanted to just kind of um, take a moment, just kind of introduce yourself. Uh, so could you tell all the listeners at home? Uh, well, let's just start with uh, who you are, uh, as far as uh, you know your your blood type, whether or not you've been been involved in uh, CIA. No, no, I'm just kidding. Um, no, but uh, just introduce yourself briefly and uh, what your. Uh, I guess I'm kind of curious what your role is in organizing this rally, or if it's part of a particular on-campus group, or you just decided to kind of put something together independently. All right. All right. Yes. Yeah. So I'm not currently in school right now, but I um, contacted some on-campus groups to help me out. I was looking at the situation in Iran, and I was thinking, well, somebody should do a protest about this. And I checked online, and there, I didn't see any locally in Kalamazoo. So I thought, like, screw it. Why don't I make a protest about this? So I got the right numbers. I contacted a couple people, and within three days, I kind of threw this together. And it seems to be going really well, and I really appreciate all the support I'm getting. Well, that's that's just absolutely wonderful, Andrew. Um, so, um, just mind me asking, like, what what was kind of some of the main reasons that uh, you know what's driving you to start a protest uh, uh, around this? Um, I know particularly, uh, you know, most of our listeners are kind of like you know millennials, Gen Z. They've kind of grown up uh, around. Uh, uh, endless war, but uh, I wanted to kind of see, like, just, you know, from your personal perspective, uh, you know, what was it about the situation in Iran that personally made you, drove you to want to organize a demonstration? Yes, for sure. Um, well, it's like you said, we are in an endless war, and what I don't think the United States needs is to go to war with another country we weren't at war with before. I feel like that's useless, and it helps no one. Also, um, one of the things that really drove me to create this was what the president said on Twitter when he said he would target Iranian culture sites if he didn't get what he wanted. And um, that's a war crime, and not enough people are talking about that. Her president just threatened an entire culture of a country with 81 million people, and we should be angry. We should be on the streets. Uh, have you... Uh, so... You know, some of us, uh, I'm, I'm like an elder millennial uh, myself. Um, we're kind of, this is kind of a big picture question. Uh, but, you know, in your view, you know, do you think uh, things are maybe a little different? You know, a lot of us on, on the anti-war left kind of groan about, you know, there were millions took to the streets back in 2003. There was still a war. Um, granted, a lot of things have changed uh, since 2003. Uh, just to your view, um, what do you think, do you think it's a little different now? Do you think it's maybe um, more or less successful for this? So, yeah, that was Andrew Lucas, and again, he's going to be organizing uh, that March, and that's going to be this Saturday. Excuse me. No. That is going to be this Saturday. Uh, at, uh, um, oh, it, 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 it pooped out on me. Hold on. <laughs> All right. It is going to be Saturday at 12.30 p.m., uh, over at Western Michigan University, that's down by the flagpoles. It's projected to last until about 3 
30. Uh, so, uh, as I said, I wanted to deep dive on a couple of these issues in, in you know surrounding Iran, mostly just because you know this this all came at us so fast. Like I said, right after the new year, mm. and uh, they're already uh, you know especially. You know, Jacob's in the studio with me now. We both went through the whole uh, propaganda okie dokie back in 2003. Uh, so a lot of these things are looking pretty familiar. And especially for some of our, our younger listeners, I want to walk you through just some points uh, to some things to point out about the way the media is covering this particular issue. So let's just let's kind of go po- point by point some of the uh, things that you're hearing a lot and. Uh, uh, the whole thing, so uh, the main thing I'm hearing from a lot of the mainstream circles is, you know, uh, you know Sal- Salmiani was uh, an evil, evil guy. He killed Americans. It is, uh, you know, morally somehow a good thing he's dead. Uh, and, even you know, this is even like, you know, the MSNBC and kind of uh, liberal folks you'll hear on the corporate media. Um, their problem is not that this guy got, you know, extrajudicially drone struck it's uh it's the way that they went about it you know there's a whole process to this before you can just murder somebody by drone you can't just uh you know do it by tweet um (laughs) so i wanted to touch on that uh that that uh that point that you hear about how he he murdered hundreds or i've heard thousands of americans uh, you know told from different sources uh and uh you know this is again uh Full disclosure, just like everybody else, I hadn't heard of this individual until uh, we, uh, you know, the, we assassinated him. Or not, not us personally, but the United States government. So uh, I had to do my own research. And uh, it's important to keep in mind when you're referencing the American death that was caused by this guy, that is in the context of the Iraq war. Uh, this man uh, basically headed a branch of the Iran Armed Services uh, is basically a foreign intervention. I can't remember the exact name of it, but more or less, the branch of Iran that uh, uh, operates outside of the nation of Iran proper. And what he was doing was coordinating with allied groups in on the ground in Iraq during the Iraq war um, you know, against the United States. Um, you know, basically coordinating attacks with uh, those people on the ground, you know, loyal to him, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so it's, it is true. He coordinated militarily to kill American soldiers, but, um, you know, what, what, are, what are we missing here? Um, okay. Let's frame it this way. So let's say, um, well, you, you know, let's say Iran, uh, showed up, uh, you know, showed up on, uh, the coast of Lake Michigan one day, um, started, uh, Started getting bombed all the time. Um, Iranian uh, soldiers were, you know, just being stationed in, say, Kalamazoo. Uh, you know, they some of them were, you know, behaved well. Some of them, not so much. Uh, there's some war crimes going on. And then let's say, um, you know, the somebody in the Canadian military came down, coordinated with us to, uh, you know, fight against the Iranians. That's a situation that was going on in the Iraq war then. So you got to keep in mind, yes, the guy killed Americans and, um, you know, but uh, that was American soldiers in a wartime scenario. He is not the kind of, uh, it's not like Osama bin Laden or something like that when you are talking about actual civilians. Um, he was He was literally basically doing his job in the same way that uh, the American soldiers would. Uh, so... Just so that's number one. Uh, let's break down another thing that's been uh, coming up uh, a lot, which is uh, that this murder, this assassination, was somehow uh, done. Uh, not even in like good faith. There's an article that I'd like all of y'all to uh, look up, and it goes into this in greater detail. But um, basically talks about how it was almost like a mafioso type setup uh with this guy so uh yeah let me it's right here but um the article i'm citing this is from people's world uh, it's a kind of a lefty socialist publication but uh these are facts you can look them all up 
Um, but uh, the Iraqi prime minister said Trump basically used diplomatic cover to lure Soleimani to his death. Um, and uh, he- here's how it played out. Um, he said that uh, Soleimani entered Iraq with a response to a Saudi Arabian proposal to de-escalate the volatile situation uh, between the two countries. He said that Trump had called for his assistance in mediating with the Gulf Kingdom, which views Iran as its main regional rival, which we all know, uh, blaming it for attacks on its oil refineries early this year. Um, basically, uh, General Salamiani was uh, told to deliver a message to Iran, uh, responding to a message we delivered from Saudi Arabia to Iran. This is what uh, Abdul uh, Mehdi explained, the uh, Iraqi uh, prime minister. <coughs> and uh, he said... Excuse me. <clears throat> uh, that uh, soon after he landed in Baghdad, he was killed in an attack by a U.S. drone uh, described by the Iraqi prime minister as a political assassination. So what this basically looks like is the Trump administration had this general come to Iraq under false pretenses in order to murder him, drone strike him. And there, there's some other things that are entailed with that. Uh, we're getting reports that apparently... Uh, this uh, uh, General Salmiani shared some anti-Trump memes. Uh, we don't know if that played in a factor, but uh, we do know that uh, this dude was basically assassinated by drone strike via tweet, uh, more or less. Um, so that's number two. Uh, you know, another a big number three, uh, and this goes back. Uh, Lawrence now joins us. Welcome, Lawrence. Yes, a uh, wild Lawrence has appeared. Lord Lawrence has appeared. <laughs> yeah, and uh, so we. <coughs> A uh, short few months ago, before uh, this assassination even started, you know, because um, if you're gonna if you're gonna put your stake and it's like, well, the general's dead, whether you, this was the whole point all the time, etc. Um, you got to keep in mind, you know, it, it's, it's kind of like Killer Mike's song about Reagan, you know, uh, going after oil, invading sovereign soil, because just a few months ago it was found out projected about 80 billion barrels. Of oil were found in some uh, oil reserves in the country of Iran. Facts. What a fun coincidence. You know, it always does seem to like these countries end up getting invaded or attacked by the United States either when we find like a, a rare resource or they change change from the dollar, uh, the petrodollar. Or they want to, uh, or like what happened in Central America when they wanted to uh, charge more for cheetah bananas. And if you ever read the book uh, Econo- uh, Confessions of an Economic Hitman, we literally uh, caused a coup. Because yeah. of because of bananas, like that's not a joke. Also, yeah, that's where the whole banana republic thing comes from. Yeah. Not the <laughs> story. No, but but the but the other part, but the other part that um, we also have to speak on is that one from our last. Okay, just just I just want to say from our last show that we did last year to coming back, and we're uh, about to. Be in World War Three, basically, <laughs> yeah. is wild. Mm. But the other thing that the thing that makes that pissed me off about uh, this is one, the mainstream media. I've seen too many people on the mainstream media say, "Oh, a war with Iran would be really quick. It'd be very easy." Oh. That killing S- Salamati uh, was. Uh, I, think, I think Lawrence is about to get to my number four here. Well, yeah, <laughs> was liberating. It was liberating for the for the people of Iran. And I'm sitting here like, "Have you lost your mind?" <laughs> right. It's 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 kind of like we've seen this story play out in 2001 and in 2003. Or right in 1970, it's like it's it's almost like it's almost like when Colin Kaepernick tweeted recently that uh, America likes uh, th- their imperialism always comes um, not with democracy but with bombs and bullets, hmm, as, yeah. especially on the heads of browns and black people. Uh, like it, there's a history of it. And hmm. the other thing that pissed me off is okay, let's have some nuance here. The world is full of bad people. Let's have some nuance. Soleimani was a bad guy. Cool. But he was a bad guy that was helping us fight ISIS. Oh, I forgot to mention that, too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He, was, he was a bad guy helping America fight ISIS. So break it down. <laughs> in the early part of the decade, he was fighting against U.S. soldiers in uh, the Iraqi occupation. But later on, just a few years later, he was assisting the very, those very same, you know, us. He was assisting ISIS. internet. He was assisting... Um, the um, um, 
He was a, uh, the International Coalition. That was, so that was America and Saudi Arabia and basically our allies. He was helping us defeat ISIS. And also, um, there isn't a Waha- there, like you have. Uh, I know that uh, a lot of Republicans think that all Muslims look the same and that there are there aren't different sects of them. But you have Wahhabis and you have um, you have the Wahhabi sect, which is what ISIS is. Um, Soleimani wasn't a part of that. Soleimani was fighting against that. He was on his way to Saudi Arabia to make a peace deal between Saudi Arabia. And Iran. Oh yeah, he, actually, I did mention that before you got yeah. here. It's basically, like a mob hit, <laughs> more yeah. or less. I'm. Yeah. He's on his way to be pe- to make a peace talk to an ally of ours. And not only did we kill him, we also killed an uh, Iraqi um, Iraqi civilians mm. and also Iraqi uh, general personnel. And then we wonder why the uh, Iraq Parliament voted. That we American soldiers need to get out the country, mm-hmm. like, yeah. come on, dog! Like, we we act like we haven't seen this story before, mm-hmm. and and the fact that, and also this is how you know that the that uh, Mike Pompeo and the other neo hawks have are absolutely lying. Do you think they would not have shown any evidence, or they? Do you think they would have shown evidence if they had it that he was? Plotting to hurt Americans. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, I mean, think about. I mean, think about this. These are the same people who won. Uh, I think that's in the same folder as uh, where the WMDs are. No, 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 no. It's no, it's no, it's, no, it's in the it's in the same folder as yellow cake uranium. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, like, dog, like, like, dog. It's it makes no like. These are the same people who cater to Trump's ego when Greta Thunberg. One Times Magazine a year, and they photoshopped his face on the magazine. This is the same people who, uh, when Trump said a hurricane was going to hit Alabama, let him draw on a map which <laughs> that, uh, that the hurricane was going to so to prove that it was going to happen when the weather services said it wasn't going to. If you think they wouldn't have shown evidence that, that this dude was going to hurt Americans, they would have. They're lying to you. To go to war, and also uh, the last thing, and last thing, because I'm because uh, I know I'm going on a rant. Um, in 2002, and it's still on YouTube today. There was a top level general that uh, that left the military, and he said the reason why he left is that they gave him a spreadsheet, um, and it was all the countries that they wanted to invade in the next ten years. Let me uh, stop me if you've heard the heard of us uh, either dropping bombs or invading these countries, uh, Afghanistan. Iraq, Libya, uh, it was Syria. You had uh, Iran. You had Iran Jordan. Was, like on the list, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you also had Jordan. You had um, I forgot the other the other. I'm I'm, uh, I'm trying it's to. A, it's all yeah. right. I don't know. I'm yeah. a po. No, just when we post this on YouTube and on Facebook, I will actually put the video up there, mm-hmm. and you'll see. Like the generals said, like no, in the next ten years, our plan is to topple. Basically, all uh, uh, seven Middle Eastern countries. Good, good thing to point out too. Like that's been corroborated by several top officials over the. Like Larry Wilkerson is is attested to that. Um, I believe the the original. Um, oh, now I'm having a brain fart. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, so like it's been it's been part of the plan literally since the Bush administration. So if you think this is based on anything new or um, you know novel. That's uh, make sure that you're putting on your thinking cap when you're hearing the media talk about this stuff. Oh no, they, we've been we've been wanting to topple Iran since Ronald Reagan did Iran Contra. Mm-hmm. Like you know what I'm saying, like like right, right, like and also, um, and this is and this is another thing because uh, going back to what we do, we talk about the mainstream media, and it pisses me off when you look at people like. Uh, when you have people like General Petraeus can go on go on uh, national TV and lie, but also people like Meghan McCain, uh, 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 who uh, literally will go on the View and stuff and not give any type of clarification or type of brevity that it was her father and the Bush administration that wanted to bomb Iran in the first place. This is also let you know. This is also you even sang a song about it. Yeah, <laughs> no, no. Here's the thing. Here's the other thing that here's the other thing that also happens. Um, that I think is funny. 
do you remember when Ben again, this is how you know this is a bad situation. When Benjamin Netanyahu came to America and uh during the Obama administration, he came and had gave a speech to Congress, and he gave a speech to Congress telling Congress that we should bomb Iran. In 94, he made the same uh, speech at, in the UN. And back in the 80s, he also was saying, America needs to go and bomb Iran. When we killed the top general, you know what he did? The, uh, what he did? The first thing that he came out as a statement, this is America's thing, we're not in it. Our top, one of our top allies in the Middle East, who's been wanting all this smoke for a decade, for decades. He been wanting, he been wanting this hookah, cigarette, and blunts. He wants all the smoke, and you, and, and then, and then when. And then when it finally comes, he's like, "Nah, dog, I'm good. I don't want this." Like, like this is how you how know. Is, how big is their How big is their army? Oh, oh. Iran. Okay, and, and, and oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. No, no, no. For for context, for people who do not know, Iran's army is four times bigger than the war in Iraq. We've been in the war in Iraq for the last sixteen years, mm-hmm. going on seventeen. We've been in Afghanistan for nineteen years. So one of those. So. We've been in these two wars since we've been in middle school. Yep. So, for context, if you think the war in Iran is going to be fast, also look at who their allies are. Mm -hmm. Their allies is China and Russia. So, you know, that whole Putin's puppet. This is where the whole world war thing comes from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, so the whole Russia gate, Trump is Putin's puppet. Yeah, he just bombed one of uh, uh, Putin's allies. And if you think that that's that that's not going to play a factor, that China and Russia are not going to back their ally, and that Saudi Arabia and Israel is not going to back us when they're hit, and that they want us to go in, dog, you've lost your mind. This is not a good. This was not a good plan. Forty five. In the last thing, because I know we have an interview that we have to do. The last thing I'm going to say, uh, Donald Trump said in t- uh, 2011 and in 2012 that President Obama was going to bomb Iran so that he can stay in office. He said that on Twitter. This is when Donald Trump was still a civilian. Donald Trump has is the third president to ever get impeached. Donald Trump has literally committed crimes uh, 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 uh uh, broken our, uh, he's committed war crimes and he's connect, uh, connect, uh, crimes against humanity and he's also broken our constitution. So what does he do when his poll numbers are low? When the, when the top three uh, contenders uh, on the Democratic side beats him in an in a overwhelming majority of swing district states, he bombs Iran. Mm-hmm. And, and then so you have, so you have Honeywell... GE and the defense contractors and people like Mike Pompeo and the other Neil Hawks who've been wanting this war and they have basically Bush 2.0. The, the dumbest man in the room who's going to listen to the last person that was in the room and what they said and he literally did what they wanted so that one, he can stay in power and two, they can, get, they can make money off of the uh, trillions of dollars that we're going to be giving to them also, how are we gonna pay for this war? Um, oh man! I, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, hold, do, do not, do not, do not hold your breath because I guarantee you the mainstream media will never ask you that question. They're gonna ask Bernie Sanders and uh, Elizabeth Warren uh, how they're gonna pay for health care before they ask how they're gonna pay for this war. But, um, but, and so that's my, so that's my last thing. Uh, President Jack O'Lantern, President uh, Joffrey, literally. Cause this war for uh, for his own benefit. That's it. Mm-hmm. Yep. And uh, I just want to kind of leave off. Um, you know, just one quick fine little point. The only winners in this are the defense contractors because there's no there's really no way. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. You know, you're talking Raytheon, Lockheed Martin, um, Boeing, G. You know, Boeing. Oh, yeah. And Boeing's Boeing after the airstrikes, uh, a Boeing plane uh, crash. That is oh, not a yeah. that is not a joke. That is not a yeah. punchline. That's real facts. Yeah. But we'll talk about but, that later. Uh, <laughs> so I want to at least end with end this with a little bit of good news, or at least like glass half empty type of thing, or half full. Um, so the good part of the good news is there's almost uh, I'd say if you had a Venn diagram of the 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 people who are against the war in Iran, or no no let me rephrase it. If you had a Venn diagram, one is people who want to go to war with Iran and people who think 
uh, Jeffrey Epstein killed himself, you would basically <laughs> have a circle. It's like, nobody wants this war. Even even fascists don't want this war. They're like, I heard they're standing like Richard Spencer on the View or something. But the point is, there is no popular support from this war except unless you are neoliberal who wa- who just want wants to sell those bombs, or you're one of those MAGA people who just like you know the orange one is always right. Now, so. now yes, yes, Jeffrey, yeah. Uh, well, Epstein didn't kill himself. Neither did Sandra Bland. But, well, but, 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 but we can talk about that later. We got interviews yeah, yeah. today. I think Epstein would probably be in our 2019 year in review section. Oh, uh, no, no. Yeah, 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 we still got to yeah, yeah, yeah. do that. But, oh, my God. Uh, next portion of our show, though, we are going to be bringing it back down to the local level. Uh, we're going to be talking to uh, Jacob and uh, uh, another guest over here about uh, Project My X. homie Luke. Yep. Oh, all right. So uh, keep it down locked. Y'all listening to the Hood Rats right at this radio program, only on 89.1 WIDR Kalamazoo, your only source. For political revolution. Hey, hey, hey! It was the best animated. It's the best animated film of the decade. Like you, Spider Man into the Spider Spider Man into the Spider Verse was voted the uh, I'm sorry. Be- of the whole decade of the of the entire decade. And if and if you have not seen it, then you are missing out on life. I'm just saying, like you missing out on a, on something good. Um, I was. I would say. I, I got you. I got you, Jake. Um, Jake so we're Jake, about to Jake. talk about Project X, but real quick before we do, that actually is tied into Iran just a little bit because uh, uh, if you've been following the like Iranian Twitter, they've just so much sass, like straight up sass. Have they ever like, been that way? They talked about uh, one of one of the Iranian officials was like, you know, we were trying to find like a, a comparable American figure to target, but uh, I don't think we can assassinate uh, uh, Spider Man or SpongeBob. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> That's real. What? No, oh no, no, no. They've been. I, they've I gotta been. go let somebody in, Lawrence. If you could segue I, I, us into I got the next you. I got you. I got you. Um. So so. Uh, full disclosure, full disclosure, I am also a part of 
uh, to, uh, so, so, um, I'm also a part of Project X. I am uh, the uh, outreach coordinator for the group. But uh, we also have um, the people who actually brought me into Project X, uh, who uh, actually got me uh, got me into got me into group. Uh, we have. Uh, if you could please speak into the mic and say and say who you are, please. Hi, um, I'm Lucy Valentine, uh, co-chair of Project X Organizing Committee, um, also social media coordinator, and I'm working on a creative healing initiative. Uh, Peace Universe, Jacob Johnson. I'm also a uh, uh, Project X Organizing Committee member and glad to be here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for those who do not know and for those who may, um, who, who are not hip to the game, uh, can you uh, can you tell us a little bit about Project X and uh, the mission of Project X? Yes, indeed. Yes, so uh, Project X, our main belief is that systems of oppression, all systems of oppression are fatal to everybody. Therefore, our main goal is educating um, the next... Ed- um, the next generation of activists um, to dismantle those systems of oppression. Really, really basic. Our flagship program is our educational is our educational cohort, um, and we also are launching a number of programs in 2020, including um, our Creative Healing Initiative, more um, outreach and external partnerships around arts programming, um, and um, other political actions as well. Um, so that's our basic uh, platform. Okay, okay. Yup, and to add on to that, uh, like Luke said, so we're basically in the uh, business of supporting young adults in Kalamazoo and surrounding areas and uh, providing space where organizing that, uh, aspiring organizers or activists can kind of come together, be in community, uh, develop their analysis. Uh, we kind of like to base our uh, Project X program off of like praxis, right? So analysis building around different topics and issues, uh, facing our world and our local community while also enhancing uh, hands-on skills, you know what I mean, and exposing people to uh, local things they can plug into and calling folks to action. Mm. So we're here to kind of talk about the program and also encourage some folks to kind of engage with our 2020 cohort. Yeah, man, yeah, man. So wait, wait, is there a, is there a, uh, uh, a Facebook page? Like before we before we get into more of the meat and, meat and potatoes, is there a Facebook page or like a... Or you, a YouTube channel, like like is there a is there a way to contact y'all? Yes, absolutely. So you can find us on Facebook at Project X Kalamazoo. That's Project like you're doing an art project. X as in American History X. If you're familiar, uh, X as in Wakanda. <laughs> if you're familiar, that's like a more general. I was like, I picked the most obscure <laughs> reference, but if you do know American History X, cool movie. Um, but X as in the letter Project X Kalamazoo, as in the place that we are in uh, on Facebook. You can also find us at Kalamazoo dot project dot x at gmail as in google dot com um, as well uh, if you are interested in um, applying for our 2020 cohort that's where we train um, young activists from 18 to 35 on uh, everything that we can find in community organizing history and praxis everything uh, from environmentalism to racism to uh, fat phobia to uh, transgender movements to LGBT movements which you know it's kind of said that twice but uh (laughs) everything across the gambit that we can find we will educate you on give you books on give you media on give you homework on um Mm -hmm. to prepare you to go out into your community and create a community project that changes the world in in ways that we want to see which is a liberated world so if you are down for that if you want to get more woke if you are already a leader in your community and you're ready for that next level kind of work um please please apply apply we're going to be having up applications open um pretty much until uh the 17th of january um and so if you're interested we definitely want to see you apply um and you can do that right on our facebook page as soon as you get on there there's a cute little blue button on the right hand side that says sign up it's super cute you just want to click on it it just draws you to click on it you know what i'm saying (laughs) so you can click that and sign up for our application um if you are not super cool with the internet like that 
that. If you're one of those like old school retro folks, that's totally cool. Email us and we can get you a paper copy of our application. You can also email us um, as well if you're like, what's Facebook? I don't get it. Um, which is totally fine. Like that's cool too. And we can just send you a link or we can send you a paper copy of our application. However you want to get it done, uh, we can make that happen for you. So yeah, definitely get in touch. I mean, you, right. you you said that you said that like yeah when I was in school I had to send carrier pigeons to my friends. Listen, like, yeah. Jesus. I'm not that old. You are. <laughs> I'm you're not that, that old. I am not that old either. And you're that old. Oh no no. Oh, oh you see. I but I'm not. I, mean, I don't know about y'all. I mean, I'm I mean, it. I mean, I mean I'm Lucy still. It. I mean, I got it, that it's, it's 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 fine because Lucy still got breast milk on her lips. But oh, <laughs> like, wow. Like, so you gonna say my pronouns wrong and come for me in the same sentence? You gonna say my pronouns wrong? You might get whooped on. You gonna say my pronouns wrong and then come for me? In the same time. It was a joke. It was a joke. It's all love. It's all love. Mm-hmm. But, uh, Just don't say my pronouns wrong mm-hmm. while you coming for me. That's all I'm saying. At least say the right pronouns. All right, my in bad. order to my complete bad. the disc, you have bad. to you have to refer to the person properly. My bad. You know what I'm yes, saying? yes, like, yes, yes, yes. My come on bad. Now. I'm sorry. You know I'm who sorry. you with? You know who you with right now? <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. You still, you still, you still got breast milk on you, but well, it's fine. Wow. <laughs> this is the man who's three years younger, three three years older than me. That's all. So I want to changing the. Uh, topic from breast milk. Also, in addition, <laughs> shout out to all the breastfeeding mothers in the world. And yes, shout out, yes, shout out to yo, all the mothers yo. of the world. Yes, yes. Shout um, out to all the doulas. Yo, shout straight, up, straight up, straight up, straight up. All the midwives, doulas, breastfeeding parents of all kinds. That's right. Mother, <laughs> That's, right. That's right. That's right. That's yeah. right. You know who you are. All right. wait, so, wait, wait. so yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh yes, yes. Right. I guess it is. Your I mean, show. I mean, Yo, we, we I mean, well, oh yeah, we just, we just got, we just got Jack. Yeah, don't let us. <laughs> I mean, they just got Jack. Yeah. We, we, okay. okay. Now, <laughs> let me. Okay. Go. Go back in the question boat. Bring it back. Right, so, um, I hear. Uh, no. um, <laughs> I was good. My professional radio voice. Uh, now, uh, so okay. Let me let me ask this as, as uh, so as an organizer. You know, somebody try, also tries to, to to help organize people. And you know, I've been uh, been watching the uh, you know what y'all are doing Project X last few years now. It's great. It's valuable community. Um, Why well, to ask? So something that I bring up time and time again. Uh, and you know when I was especially like when I was running last year, I I say it's kind of like I'm like a cro- weird mixture of like Sarah Connor and Doc Brown from Back to the Future. <laughs> oh, it's like, I we would, don't organize oh. the working class, we're all doomed. That sounds uh, about right. <laughs> yeah. Sounds I, about right. All right, uh, that's right. Uh, so uh, basically, I wanted to talk a little bit about like y'all's theory of like the the importance of because uh, you know I I feel like. Uh, what's going to really make or break mm-hmm. the trajectory of not only Kalamazoo, I mean, you can really branch out the whole human race, but, you know, let's focus down here. That's right. um, but the importance of, like, teaching people and creating new organizers That's right. in our community, kind of, you know, how do you view that as, uh, you know, the concrete relationship between training people to organize and, you know, having a working class in the city that is, you know, prepared to, like, defend itself and defend its interests. Right on. Right on. Yeah, so, man, so much good stuff said there. You know, I'll say, uh, first and foremost, this word, Sankofa, which is kind of like reaching back in the fact that, you know, we as a society or community need to be intentional about investing in our youth and young people. And, unfortunately, a lot of our elders in our community failed us at that. No shots fired at anybody specifically, but when we talk about uh, you know, uh, building analysis around how, how to bring change in our community, build analysis around different issues of oppression. Um, that's, that's stuff we don't learn in school, and we need to find other spaces where we can develop our uh, analysis and get exposed to different information about working class and, you know, about our economy in general. And Project X very much uh, uh, looks to serve as a space for folks uh, to develop that uh, knowledge in Kalamazoo. So, like, you know, it was a long time until I got, you know, mid-20s mid before I really started to understand the economic system that I was living in and how it was tied to my quality of life or lack thereof. So, you know, that's very much what we're involved in. You talk about the working class, you know, Project X burst ourselves uh, very much in the black radical tradition, mm. um, you know, and, and may, whatever, you know, and we can talk more on what that really means or define that. But to us, that's very much organizing, not just the working class, but people of color working class mm-hmm. and being specific about that. Because when we talk about wealth disparities, specifically in Kalamazoo and poverty, 
man, we could talk all day and it's a lot of work to be done. And shout out to you, Andy, because I know you've been on the front lines and really talking about this working class, um, you know, and, and that's a conversation that's not uplifted enough in Kalamazoo in our nonprofit industrial complex little city. Um, uh, just, to add, <laughs> just, to, just to add my two cents on it, on it um, a lot of this, a lot of it is also goes back to what we've seen when it comes to um, uh, structural change in America. Like, if you look back, like at the civil rights movement or the or the women's rights movements, if you look at how um, how before you could actually go and be a part of like the demonstrations, like if you were a part of SNCC or if you was a part of the Black Panthers or if you was a part of or if even even with even even with right even with MLK. They sat you down first and was like, "Yo, right. this is this is this is these are the do's and do nots. Right. These are things that you need to be educated on. This is the things that you need to know. That's to know to how to know your rights. Things things of that nature. So that if you are going to go and represent or want to create social change, that you can do it in the most productive way and in a safe way. So Project X, in the way that I look at it, is an extension of that legacy." You know what I'm saying, and we're just we're we're just trying to do our part to make sure that that type of uh, that the structural change that we want to see continues to happen. I think I think on that point, um, gosh, there's so much to say. Um, there's definitely there's definitely a long legacy in in the short time that Project X has been around, but there's definitely in Project X's blood is is definitely Black radical tradition um, and and uh, pro blackness as a whole. I think um, myself coming into Project X um, as as far as I know, and this is weird to say this, but it sounds <laughs> it's just true as um, one of the only um, uh, one of the only openly queer people, one of the only openly trans people, one of the only open non-binary people in Project X ever. Um, I also um, and I feel like I'm able to uh, to see, and I'm just a big picture person. Um, you know, the wider lens that we can reach as well um, with with Project X. Um, so, with that being said, um, the thing that I love about Project X the most is that we're just we're just down for radical uh, anything. <laughs> um, uh, that's not specifically in our bylaws, but that's something that I I think I can say safely say it's true about Project X. If you're down for the liberation, if you're down to educate folks, if you're if you're down for the freedom of everybody, then we're down with that. Um, the uh, specifically in our values about um about young folks and ageism me speaking personally i come from a background of quality youth development i'm a um youth development professional and so when we talk about youth and young people getting educated and getting trained to make their world better that's everything that i'm about um and with with that said i think there's there's so much to be harnessed on 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 both sides um when you talk about ageism and adultism um both of those things go hand in hand for folks who don't know uh, adultism um can play out um in spaces where youth are not listened to um, or not heard simply because they're young. Um, and that can also play out on another hand with ageism, um, adultism and ageism. When you talk about young people can be used a little interchangeably maybe, but ageism kind of covers both sides um, with the same with the same thing happening on with folks who are who are elders and older not being listened to simply because they're elders. Um, but we know coming from Project X that our elders are a sacred resource and our youth are a sacred right. resource right. and so our focus specifically a lot of us being millennials as well honestly <laughs> um, and and being folks who are maybe five ten years out of that of um, our age range um, some of us still in you know I'm 27 about to turn 28 mm -hmm. um, these two are like 31 32 oh, oh, oh. Um, yeah. <laughs> I was not making a dig that time I just want to make that point um, you know so uh, a lot of us still in our age range a lot of us also having gone through uh, uh, the co uh, the cohort, I was part of um, 2018 cohort. Jacob was here from the beginning. Um, Jacob and Lawrence and some of our other cohort members go back to high school. So this really is a family um, that comes together to try to bring that educational perspective um, 
uh, to to everyone that we can bring it to. I would also say that it's 2020, and as I I love the concept and and knew exactly what Lawrence was talking about when he started talking about SNCC sitting folks down and educating mm. them. Mm. I you know I think that that's absolutely beautiful, and I also think that it is 2020, which I can't believe I can say um, a week ago. I couldn't say that. Time is weird, um, but. It is 2020, and it is also time to think about um, new ways of educating folks. And I think that that looks different for everybody, especially when we start to talk about mental health and neuro, uh, neurotypical folks and what that really looks like. Um, and so um, as somebody who uh, is heavily invested, like I said, in youth work and and in education and in bringing resources to people, um, I'm really interested in, and I think PX is really interested in bringing education to folks in ways that work for them. Not everybody is even still in this day and age can read very well. Not everybody in this day and age can use a computer very well. I say this as a library aide who works <laughs> at KPL <laughs> libraries and has folks come in every day and says, how do I check my email? Um, you know, so we we're also looking at that in a way that um, is uh, using a varied amount of tools to educate folks and meeting folks where they're at in order to, to get folks that the education that um, we feel we feel like will be absolutely integral to changing the world. Uh, mm, yeah, hey, you speak my language. I love it. Uh, <laughs> I was got, so one, you know, I, I think you make some really excellent points about like meeting people where they're at. You know, uh, something that I find a lot in like the population I try to try to organize is a lot of. Uh, um, not only just like social anxiety, uh, things like that. You got to figure out like different ways to uh, bring as many people in as possible. Yeah. Um, I, I guess I want to draw back to so this is kind of a broader question, but uh, I think it really goes to the heart of kind of the sort of project y'all y'all do with Project X. Um, so when I really first got my hand into organizing, you know. Not not just like I'm gonna make a rap album about everything that's wrong with the world. <laughs> help everything. Uh, no. Um, but uh, uh, is that so, how Sister Miss K O K to be? Y yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe I if I tell enough people <laughs> in a skirt and a British accent. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this song's called Ninety Nine Percent Problems. Uh, by the way, you can find it on Bandcamp. Uh, 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 anyway, uh, I can't tell if he's serious. Or not. No, no, be, no, I'm dead be, serious. no, he's being yeah. dead. He has a uh, oh. <laughs> Uh, okay. Okay. For, for, <laughs> okay. For for those of that know, um, Andy Argo. Andy Argo is also a MC that goes by. <laughs> well, not was was, was that's a was. project. Yeah. I, uh, new, drop a new album this year. Andy via head something something. Anyway. Uh, okay. I, saw, I got sidetracked. Yeah. So one of the things I noticed about organizing in Kalamazoo, mm -hmm. and you you probably scope this out to mm -hmm. be a critique of broader organizing, mm -hmm. you know, especially here in the states. But um, you'd have like uh, kind of these more like liberal uh, mm. organizing nonprofit mm. organizations mm -hmm. who, mm -hmm. you know, they would they would like talk a little about neoliberalism about and they would get you involved in direct community organizing. But there was never an actual yeah. like analytical piece to it. Uh, you no, know, they wouldn't you know say the c word. And then there would be groups that talk about the theory, but they didn't actually do any like direct work in the community. So I want to talk about like combining theory and practice. You know, one of my favorite socialist quotes, Fred Hampton, you know, theory is Come cool, on now. but theory without practice ain't. That's so right. That's I'll, right. Facts. Yeah, I want to talk to uh, talk a little bit about how how y'all approach this yeah. uh, under, you know, the guys uh, Project X and how yeah. you think it, you know, the importance of making sure that yeah. you you uh, you you, may, you yeah. know, not only do both but do both effectively. Man, so so if I can, I'm so glad you bring that up, brother Andy, because um, you're speaking on some real stuff, man. So the idea of you know nonprofit neoliberalism, you know Midwest smile in your face, stab you in the back type stuff. That idea of you know a whole That's heap everywhere. of. That yeah, idea of a whole, uh, you know, bunch of people in, uh, you know, Southwest Michigan are having a whole bunch of money. So we're talking about people who are literally moving millions and we still have horrible numbers of disparities around homelessness, poverty and so much more. So we got to get real radical And Project X is not cookie cutter radical. Right. So and we'll see a lot of that coming up with Martin Luther King Day. Right. So Martin Luther King Day is coming up. But we know King has been whitewashed. Right. But King was a radical. And by radical, I mean. Uh, civil disobedience, which we 
uh, for show for show talk about in terms of organizing and which seems to be lost in some uh, neoliberal sectors, right? That we just somehow mysteriously got to change through people sitting on committees and theorizing and having conversations. No, 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 no. Martin Luther King was arrested over 30 times, put in handcuffs, bringing change, you know, to our uh, nation and our communities. And we seem to forget that, right? He was getting his head busted. Him with a long line of other people, women, you know what I mean? And men and young people who are on the front lines and willing to take a little sacrifice. Letter from the Birmingham jail, right? So we're coming up in that, right? Malcolm X, letter to the grassroots. So Project X realizes that in a space of Kalamazoo where we have so much damn money, excuse my language, and at the same time so much disparities that, man, we got to have some space where we can uh, come together, build analysis, and draw some attention to it while we're giving hands-on skills to people. Here's your city commission. You can say something there. So there's a lot of people who we don't even know about our city hall or how we can engage with local issues. So Project X is trying to work in collective collectivity with others, right? So we don't have it all and we need support. Um, so kind of the way, the way Project X works a little bit, if I can step back, is we're educational based, right? Education, liberation through education, right? And application. Um, and the way we do that is we meet twice a month for nine months and talk about a host of different topics, global and local. But while we're talking about topics, we're also building leadership skills. And at the end of the program, we expect participants to apply these skills in some form of a community project. So, um, man, very much so in terms of uh, we got we got to step up in terms of the radical sector in Kalamazoo because there's 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 some stuff going on. I, mean, I, I know I'm not telling y'all nothing new here. But, you know. If I can, if I can add to that really quick, Jacob, Jacob brought that back to our to our home base really, 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 really well. The the other thing that I would just before I get into anything else, going back to going back to the program, that's that's absolutely correct, and it made me think like we do need to put a little bit more of like local yeah. uh, education about our educational processes in that. I was I was just thinking of that and wrote, wrote, scribbled it down and showed Lawrence a note. Um, but that's definitely that's definitely where where we can um, come in the strongest is is educating folks and then giving them the tools to go out if it does mean protesting if that if that does mean sit-ins if that does mean die-ins if that does mean uh you know getting signatures if that does mean supporting a candidate like all of those are ways that all of those are different ways um that um cohort participants can create their project the other way um i i am a big fan of redistributing wealth mm. to that point and so if you are somebody that's working in one of these nonprofits, uh if you are somebody that is caught in that complex because a lot of people are especially young folks like myself i've worked in many 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 different nonprofits in my time here in kalamazoo um and gotten stuck in that cycle um you could still say i am working for another institution like like uh kpl um even though that's a little bit different work but if you are somebody that's in one of these institutions and wants to give back in a way that's sustainable and you're interested in what project x does you can give uh at minimum a dollar a month to project x to support not only our programming, but the the sustainability of our organization. You can give uh, eighteen dollars and seventy five cents per month, which supports half of a scholarship for a cohort member per year. You can give thirty seven fifty a month, and that supports a cohort member throughout their entire um, participation in our program for a year. You can give seventy five dollars a month, and that supports two members uh, for an entire year. So, if you're interested in doing that, again, get at us at Project X. Kalamazoo on Facebook or kalamazoo.project.x at gmail.com if you're interested. With that being said, um, like I said, I've been through a good amount of the nonprofit industrial complex and um, uh, spaces outside of that. Shout out Fire Arts, um, for example. Um, you know, and just I feel like I've seen a lot in my four years here. Um, and it breaks my heart, especially working with kids to see 
the um, concentration of money monopolized um, that is supposed to be given to folks who are so desperately in need. Everybody knows, or at least if you don't know, now you know, uh, we have a very, very serious uh, issue with homelessness in Kalamazoo, for example, and not just with adults, with youth as well, especially if they're LGBTQ. I know this because I've seen it in my own kids. Um, And uh, that's not being taken care of by the organizations who say they're there to take care of it. Um, (laughs) I won't name anybody by name, but, you know, you can just go downtown and see the barriers that are kept up uh, for people and that, uh, you know, create the space for them to stay homeless and create the space for them to stay without money um, and, and things of that nature. So it's it's really when I came to Kalamazoo, I'm a, I'm a pretty big city kid. I'm from New York. I've, I've spent time in much bigger places. And to come to Kalamazoo and see just a microcosm of the, non, uh, of the nonprofit industrial complex is really scary because there's so many resources here that are controlled by a small number of organizations. Um, and what's hard for me is just the, the fakeness of it all. And I guess it's still that Midwestern sort of niceness. But uh, Kalamazoo, <laughs> small enough where you know everybody on your block, but big enough that a few billionaire oligarchs control the city. Exactly. Facts. And so with that Facts. with that said, you know, we've got all this Not stuff about let's go to a training and that'll like fix everything or like let's, you know, let's just put let's put a little bit of money over here to keep people quiet or mm. let's, you know, let's, you know, pretend that everything is okay. Let's have an ARTT but not give it any teeth. You know, let's uh, let's uh, okay, <laughs> okay, you said you said earlier you wasn't sh- uh, uh, you wasn't going to name names with Shots are fired. You know what I'm <laughs> I didn't like, say I wasn't gonna fire like, shots. Like, I said I wasn't like gonna 10, name names. Like, so like ten thirty two in progress. I <laughs> like, never said I wasn't gonna fire saying? shots. Like, like Jesus. anybody like, who knows me like, Jesus knows it. <laughs> Just Jesus. Anybody right. who knows me knows Luke, I'm going to fire shots. Right. Luke, I'm, Luke coming out here like a battle rapper talking about big or not. <laughs> like, like, Jesus but Christ. But that's, right, like, that's just the point. Like, that's just the absolute truth. Kalamazoo is no better than anywhere else. Kalamazoo is not further than anywhere else. But we, we have the ability, we absolutely have the ability to be stronger than what we are. And it's about a redistribution of what resources and it's about a breaking down of the system that we have that encourages all of those horrible things and all of those complacency tactics that place band-aids over things, but not really, like the ones that fall off, not the ones that stick on, you know, really well. Um, so all of the resources are are definitely there. It's, it's just about how we use them. Okay, so uh, we 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 only have a few more minutes until uh, for the, uh, for this segment because we still have other stuff that we have to do on the show. But um, you talked about you talked about uh, we did redistribution of wealth. So um, it's uh, are these uh, and I want to ask uh, uh, are we are during the classes are the classes are going to be uh, are they volunteered are are people being uh, compensated for the yeah. time that they're doing. Yeah, so people are going to get stipends for every meeting that they attend. They're also going to be taken care of uh, food-wise and child care-wise. So if you do have kids, if you do have pets, even if you do have, <laughs> if you do have, uh, if you're in school, um, if you have a weird schedule because you work one of those, you know, crappy jobs that, you know, don't care about people, any of those things, Uh, I'm not going to say don't worry about it, but I'm going to say still come to us and apply because we can make it work. We have people who have been in school. We have had people, um, you know, who have had kids, who have businesses, who have both of those things. Um, We have people on our committee who have kids and businesses and, you know, ridiculous jobs that don't care about people and, you know, mental health craziness and all types of all types of stuff like that. So um, please still apply and just let us know if you have anything that's like, hey, I really want to do this, but I have this thing or I have X schedule or what have you. All of our meetings are scheduled around um, our cohort. So um, just come to us and, and say, hey, I really want to do this, but I have this schedule or this thing. Um, and we're going to do everything in our power to make it work for you. Um, we feed folks as best that we can. Uh, we have two retreats that we take pe- people on, all expenses paid. Um, it's also very possible that we'll have some out of town trips as well 
If you're familiar with Allied Media Conference, we've uh, my cohort actually went there um, uh, in 2018. All expenses paid. Um, so all of those um, basic needs are going to be taken care of. Uh, one of our values is basically taking care of people. I mean, I can see the paragraph in my head, and it's a really long paragraph, but the paragraph basically comes down to taking care of people. Um, and so that's true for our committee. That's true for our members, um, and we do that the best. We do that the best that we can. Um, so uh, if you do have any questions, uh, again, hit us up and do do apply by the seventeenth. If you are a PX alumni um, that's listening right now, or you are a partner of PX, past partner of PX, current partner of PX, um, and you've already done this cohort thing, that's cute. Guess what? We need committee members as well. Um, that's also a paid stipend position as well, um, and same sort of supports apply. We also are looking for guest facilitators. If you are proficient in anything like disability rights, trans rights, LGBT rights, um, environmentalism, race movements, um, women's movements, gender movements, um, anything like that. We would love to have you come guest host. That's also paid as well. Um, so if you're interested in any of that, again, Project X Kalamazoo on Facebook, kalamazoo.project.x at gmail.com um, and get in touch with us. We'd love to work with you. Oh, man. So... Yeah, take, take, I just take, well, take I know we want to transition here, so I just wanted to give men a big shout out and thank you to uh, the Hood Rat Strategist. Did I say that right? Strategist, strategist, strategist show, uh, specifically Andy and Lawrence. Man, thank y'all for having us here. I also want to just give a quick shout out to some of our elders, man. Um, so we are a. Uh, uh, program that has a fiduciary, so I want to give a shout out to our fiduciary organization, uh, Erase, uh, eliminating yes. racism, claiming and celebrating equity. Uh, we are so thankful for uh, the support and all of the supporters that have uh, contributed to Project X in many different ways throughout the years. Uh, I want to give a couple uh, special shout outs to a few elders. Uh, uh, Dr. Joanne Monday and Dr. Santiago Valles um, and a lot of other folks because, uh, you know, uh, Luke and I and Lawrence are here representing, but there's been a lot of people that have supported uh, getting Project X to this point. I want to give a huge shout out to uh, my family, Luke, next to me, because they have really, really uh, been putting in some work to get PX this far. So please spread the word, connect yeah. with us. Uh, Project X Facebook, uh, we got some work to do, Kalamazoo. Shout out. Yeah. Oh, man, thank you so much, y'all, for coming on the show, talking about Project X. And, uh, yeah, I, I couldn't endorse it highly enough. It's some good stuff. And yeah, like, like I said uh, earlier in that question, we need organizers. We need organizers here in Kalamazoo. And uh, it's one of the better opportunities out there to really get, you know, get your feet in the door, get your feet wet, whichever foot-based metaphor or analogy you, <laughs> you want to use. use. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Now, y'all going to get Quentin Tarantino yeah. showing up. I heard there's something uh, about feet. Uh, and, uh, and I just want to say one more thing not to bring it back. You know, you were talking about Iran uh, a lot earlier, too. And, you know, so Project X, uh, I want to just quote the old uh, uh, Grace Lee, Lee Boggs revolutionary. Maybe it wasn't her who said it, but, you know, that whole th uh, think global, act local thing, right? So, man, there's a lot, a lot of stuff happening in our world today. What can we do here in Kalamazoo? How do we connect to the greater world here in Kalamazoo? And let's, uh, let's do it. I just wanted to say that. Thank y'all. Love y'all. All right. Yeah. All right. So, again, you can so look them up on Facebook. Um, so we're gonna take a we're gonna take a two minute break. Two yeah, let's take break. a quick little break. Got a couple of bumpers of some nice music for y'all to listen to. Hey. Y'all listen to the Hood Rat Strategist Radio Program only on eighty nine point one WIDR Kalamazoo. When we come back, twenty nineteen, what a year! We're gonna talk about some stuff that happened. Uh, <laughs> God, <laughs> stay tuned. God. Only God. <laughs> That's all that you can say. We're gonna talk I'm about glad. some stuff that dog <laughs> dog. I'm I'm glad we survived. That's all I'm saying. I'm right, glad yeah. we we survived. Yeah, good. knock on wood. Like yeah. I think I think the only <laughs> only people who are happy about how this year started are like you know Fallout Larpers, but. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to set the world on fire. Handle it. I just want to start a flame.
Has your life ever been chaotic? Do you enjoy listening to strange music that regular radio cannot offer? Then perhaps you may one day find yourself listening to Radio Evolution at 89.1 FM, WIDR, Kalamazoo.
Hello, everyone. This is the Hood Rat Strategist Radio Program. We are back. Um, so we've we got, got another kind of a round table of guests uh, to talk about our next topic. It's a pretty sweeping topic. It is 2019. The things that happened therein. So uh, we have another wild person yeah. that just walked in. Oh yes, <laughs> uh, we are now joined by Jessica Martin, a longtime community organizer here in uh, the uh, city and the region. Uh, say hello to the folks at home. Hi. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know what you want me to say. Hey, yeah. I'm back. She's down with the patriarchy. I don't know. We yeah. back. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We back. Yeah. 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 Here you go. We, we back. We're, we're still here. We're still here with Luke, uh, with, uh, Luke uh, who's also here with us as well for this roundtable discussion. What round up? Table discussion. So. We're basically, this is going to be a little looser format than we usually do. I don't, well, I don't know if we ever had like a solid list or whatever, but we're going to talk about... We, we always of, have a list on our on our messenger of yeah, like, yo, yeah. these are the topics I feel like talking about this mm-hmm. week. But since we're talking about 2019 and the last decade of craziness. Yeah. yeah. So uh, there's some local stories and some national stories we want to talk about and go over. Um, you know, obviously, local election was this year. Uh, we had uh, it was unprecedented, not no, wrong word. Sorry, it was not unprecedented. It was just it was a rare, rare, rarely high profile election. We picked a brand new mayor and uh, picked all brand new three brand new commissioners. That is, um, uh, in in a lot of ways, I guess one could say uh, old boss, uh, same as the new boss. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, <laughs> we'll probably dig into that in a yeah. second. Uh, and, uh, of course, uh, you know, we're talking about, like, just some innate uh, inequities in the city. Uh, we, uh, you know, brought up uh, that, that awful thing that happened with, uh, you know, uh, uh, young people having to ride the bus. And, uh, you know, a school board that, um, it, you know, like again, we, uh, we're having discussions about how to lower taxes for the wealthy while prohibiting students from getting on the bus for some really... Mm, jankety reasons. It uh, wasn't their fault. It had nothing to do with them. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I think what I'll go ahead and do, I'm just going to map out a couple of things that I want to talk about. I think I'll, I'll give my two cents about the local election. Uh, spoiler alert, I, I ran in it. Oh boy. Uh, yeah. Not yeah. Uh, and then, uh, I, I also really wanted to hit on personally... Uh, I think we're going to talk a little bit about all the global uprisings that have happened. I want to talk a little bit about, uh, the, uh, you know, retro gazing, you know. Uh, it's got all these retro 80s, 70s things coming coming back up, like when the U.S. government tries to overthrow democratically elected governments in Latin America. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's right up there with the Rubik's Cube. Anyway. Um, <laughs> They've just been doing it in other countries for a while, oh, you know. Yeah. So it's still mm-hmm. doing it, but back in that, you know, general area. Oh, sure. oh yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, never stop. Right. So, like, it's it's uh, not no, it's it's not it's, it's like it's like Pringles, you know what I'm saying? Like like once once you once, once you once you once you uh, our country's like once we collapped one country, we just can't stop. Okay, we have okay. to, we have, to over, I was like, we have to overturn, oh, we have to overturn. Okay. <laughs> it's like once we once we, you know, dem- uh, overturn. Once we do it once, we can't we yeah, can't we just stop. Can't we just got to keep we got to eat the whole thing and then, you know, get another it's an pack. addiction. It's, yeah. an ad- it's an addiction. There it is. Um, and I, how long was this year? Was was Bolsonaro elected this year, last year? <laughs> yes, that was twenty nineteen. All right. Yes. So yes, that will include. If you if it's a scoreboard, it's uh, like one point for the left, and I'd say at least two two for the. Two, it, you had you had, Bar- you had no just, no you had you had Bolsonaro you had Bolsonaro and you had um uh the 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 UK's version of Trump. Also, um, wasn't there something going on in Austria? Um, I, I, I believe so. I well, wait. Which the, world war are we talking about now? Man, <laughs> no, I'm just saying elections of like super far right folks. This might have yeah. been 2018, but um, Bor- democracy now kind of yeah. goes in my head as yeah. a meld of one thing. I, so that might have been 2018. That's a broader. That's definitely going to be on our decade list. But the just the global resurgence and rise of, of fascism. Uh, yeah, so that was in September. Um, conservatives winning Austria, winning an Austria election um, it, legislatively in 2019. Yeah. And uh, thank you, Jessica. And also, and also Boris Johnson in the UK. So you had you had you had uh, their version their version of Trump. So twice, two times. Yeah, we are now in the Empire Strikes Back phase. Yeah, of, uh, <laughs> uh, the, 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 basically <laughs> arc of history. Yeah. All righty then. Uh, and so, so our only, so our only hope, so, so, uh, so, uh, so, but we also had, um, 
the Mexico. Mexico also had uh, their version of Bernie Sanders as uh, president. That so that was that's also super he dope. He doesn't seem to be doing much for that anybody is though. True, though. He has yeah. no no he At has all. been no he has been clapped no he's no he he has been fighting back against uh, Trump when it comes to like when it comes to uh, the uh, separation policy. He spoke out against Trump when it came to um, when it came to the. Uh, trade deal that they were supposed to be doing yep. and when it came to uh, providing better health care for the people in Mexico like the the dude's been doing work it's just that he's also dealing with Trump okay but <laughs> so. my thing is he can't keep his one simple promise of of creating a coalition a group of whatever he said he was going to create to find or at least give some closure to the what was it 24 25 families whose children were disappeared in yeah. Mexico so that was like his one promise and he can't fulfill that I'm yeah. cool with him like not being like a horrible person but this sort of like situation where we're like okay he did something is not good enough we're in an age where like fascism is literally rising at an exponential rate mm -hmm. so like being just good enough and not being Trump and and like you know having to go against Trump being frankly an excuse is just like okay cool so you're not the worst guy in the world but like if you can't at least keep the promises the one promise that you gave that's basically what this guy ran on was he yeah. he was either going to get these kids back or give this family closure and he has not done that in the what year year and a yeah, half I've, that he, he's been president that's no, my thing I, no i no i agree with that i also i'm also saying that the that being president it's there's definitely a lot on his plate that he has to deal with outside outside of that just one promise sure there is you know that's you know, why gov 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 <laughs> that's what president focusing you know what on saying? <laughs> like, like, like you know what I'm saying like it's it goes it goes it goes to a conversation that we that we we had all the time about um about on the show when it comes to uh what do you have what do you do when you have power and i think uh, and a lot of it boils down to what can you do with the control that you have a lot of things you're not going to be able to control a lot of things you have to wait and wait and let uh play out and uh it's especially when you are you know the leader of a country that happens a lot and we saw that with multiple stories this year um one of the so I, I I think um you just with the whole ammo thing I did want to throw something so I will say, um, you know I I feel more comfortable kind of if I kept you know studied Mexican Mexican politics more closely, but uh, you know the thing is he did promise transformative change right and that is that is a big problem because mm -hmm. of the, you know the ammo types and the Bernard types and all of that. Um, you know, the biggest problem is if you can't deliver on those promises. Don't promise it. Yeah. Don't promise it and it's only it will come right. back to bite you. Because exactly. it will give it will give the you know, the global right, right more of an argument. It's like see, you they elected can't do it. you elected a communist See what and they can't even do it. That's the point. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly the point. Don't promise transformative change if you can't bring it. Don't because yes, being president's hard. Being president is probably besides being a single parent making no money in America is one of is one of the hardest jobs. Um uh like I get it. Being president's hard. Boo hoo. However, you ran for this job, you promise people things, and you need to deliver on that, or don't promise it. Or communicate with the people and say this is what's happening. The one of the biggest in issues in government is that they're set up to be non-transparent. And so, if you're going to be a president, if you're going to if you're going to promise people things, if you got, if you say you're going to change the world, if you're going to be the Bernie Sanders of Mexico or whatever, that's cute and everything, but make it happen. And if you can't make it happen, show up in that way. Every president that's trying to go against a, a white supremacist, basically fascist, horrible capitalist government has a lot of problems we all got a lot of problems mm -hmm. mexico's got a lot of problems the, the, do I something mean, yeah Go but ahead. they're what's happening is that they've investigated this and it's saying it's not going to make much change so like you all were saying he couldn't fulfill that promise i don't think he knew in that the first when he, place right when i don't think he maybe he did know to me that seems like a huge thing in mexico to investigate and actually create change after it so they are investigating this and trying to figure out what happened, but ultimately change is not going to come well, 
from this is what they're all saying. Change, right. well, and we know this as organizers. Change doesn't come all at once. Change, mm-hmm. change is change is a slow process, and then you have an avalanche of then you have an avalanche of movement that will happen later. Yeah. But first, it is first it will be taken slow, or you could do the Trump thing and lie and mm-hmm. say that. And say that you're going to build a wall and Mexico's going to pay for it, but it's coming out of our tax dollars. Like, so, you know what I'm saying? Like, the, yeah. the, um, So you could be, you could do, try to push for that change and understand that it's going to take a while. Or you could lie and, uh, and or break the Or you could also yeah, communicate that to your people. You could actually talk to the people right. that voted for you and that pay your salary. And yeah. you could have conversations with those people, especially those parents whose kids and children and wives and, you know, partners right. and parents and all that stuff who have been gone for years and have oh, yeah. conversations with those people. You have to continue being the candidate that ran once you're elected. You can't just all of a sudden stop communicating and stop being exactly. the person that you were I, when you ran. I agree with that. Exactly. And that's that. what What's happening is that he's gotten into office and he's not communicating to his people what's going on, which if you were to ask me, what's the difference between that and lying? True. He's not divulging the truth to his people. Right. And they are asking for it. They're demanding it. They're in the streets for it. Right. Mm-hmm. Some of them so, who are journalists are getting murdered for it. I mean, no, it's not just it's not just that also happened in Mexico. You also got to remember what what also happened last year with El Chapo and El Chapo's yep. son that also happened in Mexico. Oh, that yeah, we so are much going that on we that, that we are also uh, responsible yes. for because the guns that the that that cartel got they got mm-hmm. that from us. Well, and that's like <laughs> that's discuss the reason why the change isn't coming now that we've brought that up. <laughs> right. I mean, we, we've been kind of dancing around it a little bit, but we know in Mexico a lot's going on, and that just like up here, lobbyists run our, our stuff, down there it seems like the cartel runs a lot. They have a lot of influence, they have people everywhere, they... Clearly, they take children. They and by that, people. we mean they're threatening everyday people. Right. Yeah. Right. To, they're extorting everyday families and right. people who have basically nothing. And if they don't pay, they die. So that's right. kind right. of right. what I mean, you mean saw, I mean, you. I mean, again, you saw that. You, uh, Dude's in, in, a, in, a, in a situation. Add, really you really add, like, to, yeah. add, to add to that, look at what happened when you look at the story of what happened with El Chapo's son. They literally, literally... Um, had El Chapo's son after they uh, captured El Chapo for those who don't remember the story they uh, the government of Mexico captured El Chapo they had him in the city the cartel literally came in with 50 cows and said if you don't give him back we will start shooting the yep. civilians in the city then they yep. had literally it was one man or an entire city and the government was like all right dog we're, we don't want to have a uh, right. we don't want to have a slaughter of this city so we're yeah, going to give him back so it, it but again when we look at the war, like, again, going back to the war on drugs, what we talk about, we influence yeah. that conflict because the weapons that they got came from us. Right. Influence is a light them. word. Mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We I mean, helped it. Yeah, I mean, we definitely facilitated it. Yeah. Yeah. That, uh, facilitated is a better word. Yes. I like yeah. that word better. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, so this actually kind of it makes it reminds me kind of going back to uh so venezuela and bolivia i think there, there's actually some issues that are tied into kind of this 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 uh this relationship between um you know your your own um your own governments either like you know misfires or mismanagements how um you know fascists or you know people who are backed by the cia can use that as a wedge to uh Mm -hmm. create these coups you know we saw this happen in both venezuela uh and bolivia this year uh and uh you know if you break it down so again like a lot of these problems that uh, almo was talking about you know uh drug running in mexico is directly related to uh you know those the, the gun running comes from the United States. The drugs are sold to the United States. It is, it exists because of you know American capitalism, imperialism, the war on drugs. You could say the same thing. Venezuela, um, you know, uh, you have a, a system where yes, there were uh, a few mismanagements that you could talk about, um, but they were kind of blown up and exaggerated, and you know, straight up lies were being told about Venezuela, mm-hmm. while. You know, at the same time, these crippling sanctions from the United States were going on. Um, there was a study that projected um, about 40,000 Venezuelans died directly because of those sanctions. And it also brings up the point, you know, a lot of these right wingers on like Fox News or something would say like, ah, well, you know, this is an indication of the, the failure of socialism or the failure of the Venezuelan government. It's like, well, 
when you deliberately starve a country to death, or not to <laughs> death, but when you deliberately strangle a country, yes, I think that's probably going to be a huge part of the problem. Uh, uh, another part, uh, but uh, again, and this is something that we don't, we don't, we don't, we say it on here, but uh, the mainstream media doesn't say it. Um, sanctions is economic warfare. We've done it to Venezuela. We've done it to Iran. We do it to countries where we where we want to invade. Because let's also not forget, earlier mm -hmm. this year, uh, earlier last year, Trump wanted to uh, wanted conflict with Venezuela. Yep. We we literally help install a uh, a president in that country that the people didn't vote for right like like and we helped that we help um make that happen you know what i'm saying so a lot of in a lot of the times when we talked about it on the show last year we said if nancy pelosi said you know what trump is not a legitimate president uh, leader anymore i'm the president now how would we how would we react to that as Americans? Like how would how would the mainstream media uh react to that? I mean if, if another country if another country said, "You know what? We do not uh agree. We don't yeah. think that President Trump is president anymore. We want we think Nancy Pelosi's now president." I don't know if that's a perfect analogy cuz there's a pretty I mean, substantial amount of Americans who want to send the Mandalorian after Trump. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Real talk. I mean, Real talk. I mean, here's the thing. In in terms of that actually happening, listen. Anybody who knows me and has had a conversation with me about government knows that I personally do not believe in any part of the U.S. government standing in order to create liberation. Anybody who's had a conversation with me about voting, U.S. government, or anything knows that I fully believe that we need to entirely dismantle it in order to bring liberation to anyone, mm -hmm. including everyone. Um, so, I mean, my general bar for anybody being president is, am I going to have my birth control? Am I going to have my Medicaid? Yes. Are they going to leave me alone? Are slightly less people going to get shot? No! Are slightly <laughs> less people going to Gonna get blown up no at this point there's little i can do about that except continuing to do the work that i do right. so as long as my people are getting taken care of and there aren't more people getting shot than there was before you know that's basically my bar because that's all you can expect from this government mm -hmm. now nancy pelosi is really really annoying and i don't like when she talks <laughs> but is she better than what we've got? Yeah. But as I said before, that's not good enough. Mm -hmm. However, I do think it would provide an opportunity for all of those vigilante MAGA people who have stockpiles of guns to roll up to the White House and uh, you know, blow it up or something. Uh, I uh, honestly we do not condone that. Honestly, honestly, we don't. Don't. No, we, do we don't condone that. <laughs> we, we don't, don't condone do that. that at all. But I do think people are looking for a reason. Look at Charlottesville. Look yeah. at look at a young girl getting run over and killed. And look at, you know she's, Sorry. No, no, no. I no. don't know your friends. <laughs> no, that's okay. Um, they they yeah. are correct. Growing up in rural America in Michigan, playing well right on the outskirts, those people out there, they're waiting they're for looking a reason. For they a are reason. literally looking for a reason. I've partied with them. I grew up with them. They are completely miseducated. They have hate that is rooted into them from, like, the most ignorant teaching I have ever heard. These people, there's a KKK clan right out in Dalton. They were, if you don't remember, like right around when Obama got elected, how there was some, you know, white people got in trouble for having ordered weapons of mass destruction. That was in Orangeville. And it was because President Obama was going to be elected. They are looking for that reason. And anytime anyone comes into election that could take their guns away, they use that as a reason. And they take it out on the most oppressed and justify it that way. They're going to end up at the White House, but before yep. they get there, they're going to roll through communities of color yep. and hurt people really, really, really badly. Which, which the is Proud Boys are already doing. They walk through the Vine neighborhood, through the north side. They try to incite violence here and, you know, we all start texting each other saying that they're here 
and we try not to go fight them, but they've been spotted walking See, around. As in a bars locally and based side note to this, yes. uh, that is a hundred percent accurate. Uh, yep. We I didn't know that. Uh, not yeah. only not so yet. the Proud Boys, they're trying to incite violence. Uh, uh, Proud Boys in particular, uh, over the course of this year, uh, they uh, threatened mm-hmm. a local musician, okay. uh, which is a, a you know big story. And then uh, there's also been uh, fascist gra- graffiti reported yep. uh, at parks yeah. in the yeah. north side, yeah. yep. um, and on Western Campus actually Western last campus. year. Yeah. 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 So, and and again, but but, and this is how you know that um, they don't really want that smoke because when they came on the north side, they went to the elementary schools. Mm-hmm. They didn't go. They didn't go to. They didn't go to Patwood. They didn't go. They didn't go to Alamo. They mm-hmm. didn't go. They didn't. They wasn't. They wasn't going to. They wasn't going to a uh, polar bear. They didn't go. <laughs> no. They didn't go anywhere. They. It, they're like, the, they're the gonna smoke. go places that they think they can pull you out and yeah. cause you to strike yeah. them they're, first. They're gonna. Right. They, they. They. The smoke that they want is with old lady. With 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 mm-hmm. people who go to church. To, with right. that, 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 that type because if you attack those people, what are the yeah. other people gonna yeah, do yeah, that love them? Yeah. They don't want. They don't want smoke with people who. Will give it to them, right? Right, right, <laughs> yeah, right. So, but so that was one of the stories that because um, one of the stories that I wanted to talk about was a documentary that I saw back in uh, October of this year when Al Jazeera doing some fantastic reporting, um, talking about the Israel lobby and uh, Israel lobby in America using their influence to buy politicians. Mm-hmm. Um, Cutter. Which is which owns Al Jazeera back in August. Um, uh, uh, By the way, careful, Lawrence. I feel like somebody from like MSNBC or CNN is going to be coming uh, in any minute. Uh, uh, they call me anti-Semite. Oh, yeah, real talk, real talk. Duh, Just don't ever run called, for office. They call. They, they call. No, no. But think about it. But no. But this is the reason why I wanted to bring up this story because this happened in. Uh, this happened. This this particular story. Uh, the documentary, a documentary that was aiming to expose the Israel uh, Israel converting influence uh, campaign in the United States, was leaked to the media after the government uh, of Qatar pulled it from Al Jazeera. Al Jazeera being uh, being uh, funded by Qatar the same way that the BBC is funded by the UK. They did fantastic work on this documentary. It's still on YouTube today, and I recommend everybody to watch it. And it basically shows how. Our government in America is owned and bought by lobbyists and corporations. The Israel lobby is no different from the pharmaceutical companies. They're no different from the oil companies and how they money peddle money. influence. Money Alec. is money. So, so when this came out, they 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 buried it. They bury uh, they buried it because it sh- it showed the sh- shamelessness of how they would buy influence. And when people like Ilhan Omar or Rashida Tlaib or AOC or even Bernie Sanders now, who's also called this out, they call them anti semites. Well, it which worked really well against Jeremy Corbyn. So it it worked well for again no. And the reason why it worked well with Corbyn because one. The BBC is just like MSNBC here at times, but also they they were doing Corbin smears for for years now. You're gonna try to do that same type of smear against Bernie Sanders, who's actually Jewish, or against Ilhan Omar when they are basically saying money is money, and people giving money to politicians are giving bribes. Right. That's what it is, and that's in that documentary. I I I highly. I highly uh, say to everybody who's listening to this, read the story, watch it, watch the documentary because it's still up online. That was one of the many stories that uh, happened last year that needs to get more coverage. What's it called again? The documentary? Uh, documentary. Uh, it is... Uh, I'm to find name. Real quick aside while we, uh, we're it looking that up. Yeah. Um, you know, I think it's important to note, too, uh, something you really saw this year as a tactic by the mainstream media. That's like one of the big things to do is critique the media on the show. Um, is, is how they've used, uh, there is an upsurge in anti-Semitism, anti-Semitic attacks. We close the year out with a couple of gruesome, <sighs> gruesome tragedies. Uh, in, in New York, yeah, yeah, dog. But mm. uh, what tends to happen with these media, uh, or not absurd, uh, the media... Uh, it's kind of deflected left has tried to paint uh, you know people involved in the BDS movement uh, people who support Palestinians even even a lot of Jewish activists who support uh, Palestine 
as uh, as part of the problem, as part of this upsurge in anti-Semitism. When really, you know, the group, the types of, of people who criticize the far right government in Israel and the far right who commit these attacks couldn't be any more ideologically different. It- no, again, they tried to say that Bernie Sanders is anti-Semitic when he said Palestinians have human rights, confiding uh, and not admitting and not even admitting or acknowledging when Donald Trump went to the Jewish coalition here in uh, in America and basically said, "Y'all don't like me because y'all can't buy me." He, he said that y'all, he said to a room full of Jewish people that you are that. I'm not going to take your money. So I and I know that y'all like to renegotiate deals. Those are absolutely anti-Semitic things to say. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In in front of Jewish people. Yeah. That's like <laughs> that's that's like going to the um that's like going to uh a Black Lives Matter movement or something and someone uh saying saying some anti black like anti black stuff stereotypes. Mm-hmm. Uh like uh uh the uh which the president actually has. He's done I'm those things. Yeah, like, he's, oh, okay. he's, 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 that's happened. Well, like, that's I mean, you can't even make a metaphor out of it. Just it's really, it, it actually just find oh, no, one just, time, it's uh, there. I just wanna say we've got about ten minutes left. So I think I wanna focus our last few minutes here on local issues. Before I do that just one, I always want to try to leave everybody with a little bit of like good stuff, good news, etc. So this year, we've seen the rise of fascism, anti-Semitism, etc. Um, but we've also seen a record number of uprisings, of mm, resistance. Yes. We yes. are seeing a globally kind of revolutionary um, people's movements all over the planet, from Lebanon to uh, Baghdad, to uh, Chile, which Chile has a certain historical poetry to it because that was really like the first neoliberal project. The also, first CIA coup. also shout out Haiti. Yeah. We also got uh, we also got Haiti. Shout out Haiti. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, we also got Horn of Africa. Yeah, basically, yeah, yeah, yeah. the whole China. Horn of Africa. <laughs> yeah, China. China. Look at what China. they're doing with the facial Hong recognition. Kong, Hong Kong. Uh, Holy cow. Uh, we got to talk about Hong Kong. You yeah. got like. Like, there's a lot of people who are fighting back. The but yellow, can the we, can we touch movement. on the fact that a lot of them are, like, still flying? Like, they're flying our flag when they're pro- protesting, and they're saying they want to be here. They don't oh, know. Uh-huh. I don't think, oh. yeah, they even know the full no. truth <laughs> of what we are. No. Nope. So. That's, that's a complicated topic that would probably take a long, a long time, time to figure right. out. No, yeah. <laughs> I mean, no, the uh, I, the idea of fighting back against your oppressor, uh, oppressors, I mean, I can see, I can see why. Right, but yeah, literally but tooting like, Trump's horn. Yeah, was like, yeah. what's the message being sent out there? Yeah, and that's yeah. that's sorry. That. Just yeah. there's a whole but, conversation but, about how nothing right. in this country was but, based on was for but, anybody um, that really needs it. it. Uh, <laughs> uh, yep. uh, when sorry. they see us, when they see us came out. Uh, I think this year mm-hmm. as well. Yeah. Fantastic yeah, documentary. Yeah, do if you have not seen it. My God. Well, if Amazing. we're if we're gonna say that too, we gotta talk about the R. Kelly documentary, which yep. they're doing a part two of hashtag mute R. Kelly always and forever. Yeah. Um and I mean if we're gonna say that we do I mean, I am gonna say Weinstein as well getting taken down. That's Both of them currently either up, in jail or yeah. in court. But to bring it back to the local point that um Andy was talking about, this is something that like really hits home for me again as a youth organizer. The um youth bus cards um that were yeah. basically taken away from kids, basically stealing money from kids who uh, go to school every day, go to work every day, take care of families, take care of uh, younger siblings, um, and take care of themselves a lot of times. So if you don't know... Um, KPS, Kalamazoo Public Schools and um, what used to be K-Metro is now just Metro, I guess. They're fancy now. Um, uh, The uh, public bus system came together and said they were going to give free unlimited rides to all high school students as long as you go to a KPS school. That's dope, right? But after it was between two, between the hours of like two and five o'clock, and when everyone, yeah. right when, right, basically, right when so out. you can, so you can, you can get to school, you can get to work, you can do everything you need to do through the day, mm-hmm. and you don't have to pay any money for it. That's great, right? However, only about what was it, uh, early November, which if you know how schools work, um, a month after school started, uh, Metro announced that they were going to basically disband the program, um, and that 
if you wanted to continue being the pro- in the program, uh, your parent needed to uh, opt you into the program, and you couldn't use it between 2 and 4 p.m., which, what? again, if you know anything about schools, that's when kids get out of school. Okay. Um, and so they also, fun part, on top of it, they sent this out over Thanksgiving weekend with less than a week to implement it. So they basically sent it out on a Friday before Thanksgiving, before the week of Thanksgiving, and gave everybody until like the Monday or Tuesday to um, to opt into it and to just read it. Again, if you have kids, if you know kids, if you have younger siblings, if you're a young person, you know it takes your parent probably about a week to read something and then to like actually get it done. Uh, so t- t- that was really, really frustrating. And honestly, shout out to Young Kings and Queens, um, to Keisha Johnson yeah. and her husband for being on the ground at the bus station every single day because not only did this messed up stuff happen, but then police were at the bus stations mm-hmm. every day when kids are getting out of school to apparently do a crowd control, quote unquote, but instead were pepper spraying and beating up and arresting kids. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That uh, the, the the This is the thing that, the, well, we talked about that story too, and the thing that we uh, also talked about is the fact that the okay. Metro did not think that they were going to get an Im, uh, influx of writers when they implemented this. So instead <laughs> yeah, of so, so cool. instead that was no that was that their, makes sense. that was their reason that was one of their reasonings that they didn't they didn't realize how much how many Who's more writers their stuff. I e they didn't have the money. No no yeah. no no no. Yeah. no it, it, uh, and so again, covered. what also happened earlier this year with with the Metro, the uh, the bus drivers had a strike. Why did they have a strike? It's because one, they were working. There were uh, multiple uh, drivers that were not uh, getting the type of food or rest uh, that they needed while doing the, the drive. Also, they didn't get a raise in the last fifteen years, and you're asking people that to work so longer hours. You haven't given them a, a raise in fifteen years. On mm-hmm. top of the fact, you won't let them use the bathroom. Some of those drivers were wearing Depends diapers. Yeah, that was another big story. And that, of course, the healthcare yeah. probably wouldn't yeah, pay for like bladder yeah, infections. Yeah, so, time yeah, off and so, this is so, while they're expanding the bus system yeah so 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 instead of being like yo we need more drivers we need to hire more drivers we need to have more people more buses on these routes they just, put more, strain on they just put more strain on the actual riders Yep. You know what I'm saying? So it, it, it was it was butt backwards. That's basically that's yep. the entire the entire <laughs> and the entire the entire way of looking at it was just backwards. Like like and, and I mean we only got one more minute left. There's a well, bunch of other uh, stories so that we let don't. me uh yeah. Yeah. so I don't think anybody comes on after the show. I'm not hundred percent certain, but if not, um I we could probably push another ten fifteen if y'all are down for that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I have an interview at eight thirty, which is why ten to fifteen is the cutoff. Oh, no, 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 If you got an interview, then we got to then we can we can. Well, no, I mean, I, 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 it's going to be a phone interview. So. Ah, I got it. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, um, I wanted to talk a little bit too about how I, I think this also talks about some some critical issues when we're talking about um, historical inequity. Uh, mm-hmm. And granted, this wasn't exclusive to this year, but I think you really saw it. Um, codify itself, especially after the elections. Um, but, you know, we've had community organizers, historians do some incredible work exposing a lot of the, especially racial inequities here in the city of Kalamazoo. Um, mm-hmm. Thinking of, you know, Matt, Matt Smith's work on redlining. Yo, yeah. shout out Matt Smith. Yeah, shout out Matt Smith. Smith. That's my dude. Yep. Um, you know, structurally, as we've mentioned before, uh, you know, Foundation for Excellence predominantly lowers taxes for high-income individuals, so mm-hmm. while at the same time the bus system is is you know excluding young people from the bus, um, we are also doing all of these like urban renewal projects. We're seeing this was the year we started seeing sky rises go up Gross. all over the oh, city, over oh, the place, over the man, yeah. oh over the and, you place. Know, Summerlin's 2018, but I cannot go anywhere downtown with seeing construction, construction explicitly. <laughs> For luxury apartments. Yep. yep. Not for nothing else. Yep. Just and, to gentrify. And also, but also, it's also uh, the one thing that, and we talked about this during the race. Where is those? Uh, the the reason why they're doing because they're saying they're going to have affordable housing for those that live around in the area. Forgetting the fact that one, where they're building. Uh, the affordable housing is based off the medium income, mm-hmm. not the actual medium income of the of the city. The medium income of 
of Michigan is I think it's 500k. I mean, not 500k, 50k. Yeah. The problem is the medium income of Kalamazoo is less than 30,000. Yep. Mm-hmm. So the majority of citizens in Kalamazoo won't afford it, won't be able to afford said apartments. On top of the fact that the apartments are in flood zones. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, and I then to hit the, apart- the apartments this are in flood zones. So the yeah. cheap apartments, where are they going to be at? They're going to be on the lower floor where those apartments will be flooded, and that yep. will structurally every year that will that yep. will that will damage the structure of the apartments. You're putting everyone who's on the upper floors in danger, and everyone in the surrounding area in danger. Because if you think that those flood zones are not going to uh, damage that building, you have lost your mind. In the mayor that we have right now, he doesn't seem to really mind flood zones or zoning or anything. Even though, again, so, Kalamazoo River floods every year. Well, and now they're, <laughs> they had the people that year? sold parts of Kleinstock and they're fighting for those yeah, and the yeah. individuals have turned the community down there. They've put down two offers. The last one was $550,000 to buy this land and the people said no and basically what's going to happen is people in Kalamazoo didn't know this but a lot of those woods are privately owned. Yeah, mm-hmm. And they let you walk on their woods. They let mm-hmm. you enjoy that. And a lot of that chunk, uh, Kazoo Schools has been involved with fighting against this too, is more than likely going to be sold to a housing development place. And we're about to be seeing a lot of development and teardown in Kleinstock. So things are just yeah. going get, to be getting harder with flooding and for that, the animals that live here, it's going to get crowded. That, and I mean, look at the north side too, like slowly but surely, if you go right past the bus station, like there's all those cute little new houses, they're coming yep. for the north side. I don't oh, think yeah. they're going to get are. it because the oh, north yeah. side I know, is Matt, about that. Nah, my, Matt, no, Matt, you're the north side. They ain't going to get, no, no, get, no, they ain't gonna get the north side. They start putting those little coffee shops. Right. They ain't going to get the north side. No, but Maddie. But they coming for yeah, it. Yeah, they are. <laughs> yep. Uh, uh, we are definitely on the defensive, though. And I'll, I'll let mm-hmm. you know. I just wanted to really put a pen on it. You know, uh, again, what, you know, one of the tragic ironies is so many people pay attention to global politics. You know, what happens here locally affects us locally so much right. more. And, mm-hmm. you know, something I said a lot over the course of this year, Kalamazoo is, uh, you know, it's... Uh, uh, socially progressive, but economically Ronald Reagan. And yeah, that is going to have held strong. Facts. Especially, you know, David Anderson being the mayor. And say whatever you will about his character, but this man is a lock, stock, and barrel. Uh, <laughs> 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 uh, you know, this is a guy who's a prop, like, he's involved in property development. He owns properties. He's, it, that is bully. where his, like his, bully. Um, ideology is just look at his solution to affordable housing you referenced like the floodplain thing now something that we talked about a lot the more progressive people who are running in the recent election brought up time and time again we got all of this empty housing stock we just need to take it back and put it back for community use and their solution though build up new properties in places where in floodplains this was one of David Anderson's plan develop like high density housing on a floodplain, and uh, there's actually when, when you had yeah. like the, when you had uh, what was it the the old health center got uh, the old health center got tore down right the uh, uh, on um, on on Gold Road the old health center got tore down on Gold mm-hmm. Road you could have turned that building instead of tearing it down after the nuns said that they didn't want it transformation you could have turned, turned that building streets. into uh, mm-hmm. either affordable cost. houses or. Uh, Homing for a uh, uh, housing for a homeless, and let's not forget, like uh, also what happened last year. You had the polar vortex that happened last year, mm-hmm. where you uh, where uh, our government failed to protect people when literally, if you are outside for more than ten minutes, you c- uh, would have froze to death. And they Do- don't see a problem with it either yeah. to like, this like, day. Like shout, yeah, yeah, also, this also shout out to the churches, shout out to the yeah. Douglas Community Center because they stepped Facts. up. Uh, I know you were down there, Andy, helping yeah. uh, helping out uh, mm-hmm. with that as well. Doug, we we have to, especially now in today's time, we have to not just hold our representatives accountable, mm-hmm. but we have to be able to uh, do more of that call to action when it's needed. Because I don't know if y'all checked the weather report, but we're going to end up getting hit mm-hmm. uh, with a, a yeah. winter with another winter storm that that they're saying is going to be yep. as bad or worse than last mm-hmm. year. Yep. You know, uh, I just wanted to add a little bit of postscript to like the code blue emergency shelters. 
and kind of the aftermath of that. Everybody during the campaign, oh, by the way, I'm speaking as somebody, I ran as a, I was the radical socialist guy who ran the state commission, <laughs> and I got, got in seventh place, because like like they say in Back to the Future, I guess you guys weren't ready for that yet, but your kids are going to love it. Anyway. <laughs> uh, yeah. 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 Bags. But, but Bags. anyway, so the Cobu shelters uh, were a big point that everybody brought up in the election, including David Anderson. Like, oh, we have to do better. We have to do better. Where is it at now? Uh, the new city commission is in. I have not seen a new concrete plan to deal nope. with the homelessness issue. Uh, last I checked, um, you know, uh, the uh, city manager, Jim Ritzema, I had a chance to talk to him time and time again. And uh, there is no, uh, and I've reconfirmed this with, uh, you know, other people who've been elected, there is not going to be a local municipal push for a homeless shelter. At best, they're going to be kicking that responsibility onto county, which I guess they seem a little bit more interested in a municipal shelter. But yeah. bottom line, where we're at, our emergency preparedness plan is not any markedly different than it was last year. And mm -hmm. when I had a chance to sit down and be like, so we don't have any really any more resources or planning around this, we basically just need to build a stronger uh, and quicker to mobilize grassroots yep. network mm -hmm. so that yep. we can just be ready to go. That's mm -hmm. how these shelters happened last time. A bunch of grassroots organizers wanted to save people from freezing to death. And what did the city do? They gave everybody a check six weeks after it happened. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Well, and you got to understand, too, everything that we're talking about is connected. I mean, everything that we're talking about is connected mm -hmm. in general. But yes. specifically in Kalamazoo, there is not enough housing at any given time for the amount of people that are in Kalamazoo. Yeah. That's, that's one of the primary reasons why there's so many folks that don't have permanent housing. Literally, there are more people in Kalamazoo than there are housing units, yeah. right? I want to make the, just a distinction. That doesn't mean actual number of houses or units so how many are available there. right to to right. to people yeah. that 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 are available to people on top of on top of the whole affordability situation so like that that coming together there's there's the fact that you have places you have all of these different places that are supposed to be shelters for folks that have all of these different qualifications and things of the, and things of that nature basically mm -hmm. barriers for, from keeping people from being there who are either the places that are doing it well are not getting enough funding because the places that are doing it you know poorly are getting more funding because they have bigger names and then you have folks who are you know dealing with a whole bunch of you know other different struggles and so they can't be in those spaces and that's only if you're you know that's only if you're you know cisgender and you're able to walk and if you're you know able to literally if that's only if you only have one or two and clean that's only if you only have the barrier of home Homelessness. If you have the barrier of a marginalized gender, of a disability, of a person coming out of domestic violence or in yep. or dealing with domestic violence or any other barrier, you're probably not going to get in most of the shelters in Kalamazoo. And that's if it's warm. Well, and on, and on that about the whole domestic violence thing, we do have opportunities coming up. They are building court systems that we can start pressuring to do the correct thing for these people, because mm. um, I discovering that what it's almost half of the homeless population, including youth, is involving with domestic violence situations. They yeah. flee um, and they take their children with them. So I don't know. I just don't agree with the fact that we're making youth homeless and we're putting up all these wealthy buildings that are going to attract more rich people from out of our city mm -hmm. is my concern. Um, they are, we have projected Michigan to be a top state to live in and we are receiving more refugees from our own country. Um, and it's from wealthier states like California and whatnot. So we are bringing in more wealthy people, which their voting is going to go towards what they want. And we're going to be seeing more of that if we don't start pressuring the courts that are now being built and put in place to do the right thing. Not to mention mm -hmm. the old money that's been here. Right, right. Uh, like, well, just one last thing before we have to go, because we have to talk about it because it's because it is a thing. Wait, I want to bring up one more local issue. All right, go ahead. This is the biggest, the biggest story of 2019. If you, if you follow social media. Rid of the old candy canes. <laughs> <laughs> you talking about you don't want to talk about it. You talking about the downtown candy canes, <laughs> man. No, okay, the microcosm. What we need the, 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 the downtown, the, 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 the downtown candy canes. <laughs> Doc, 
They got something. Doug, not only, not, I mean, Doug, you want to talk about things they got rid of. We got rid of Island Fest, Blues Fest. Um, oh, the yeah. Festival. Seriously. Like, like, what was, there was that? A, there was a lot of, there was a lot of things that we've gotten rid of because downtown residents are upset that they use the downtown park to like have festivals. Noise next yeah. to the festival site. Yeah, next oh, to the yeah. festival site. So yeah, so even oh, though I chose to live here. Even though, yeah, even though I yeah. chose to live next to the festival site. Yeah. Knowing full yep. well that all summer there's festivals constantly. Well, right. And these are the kinds of people that they have the time they call all the time. They bug their they, representatives. They, they email. They, they can leave money. work or also, do right. it at work. Also, right. also bro, exactly. if I live downtown next to the festival site and there is a festival going on, and I could go to my balcony and enjoy the festival. Like, right. how about you just enjoy the space you got? Okay, oh, anyway. like close your windows. Oh, close like, your windows. You know what I'm saying? You sound. You have enough money. Soundproof your house. Okay. Anyway, but anyway, <laughs> anyway, okay. But we have to talk about this because it is important. Um, because the ele- because the presidential election is coming up. Also and known as the last election. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. I mean, we talk about stuff. We we me we joke about me and Andy joke about stuff all the time about things that are um, disqualifying. I believe wholeheartedly that if you are getting your marching orders from billionaires in a wine cave or please or, 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 or if you think that you can have a Republican as the vice president those are things that are disqualifying right. and Joe Biden literally said that he would think about or consider having a Republican as a vice president and Mayor Pete and 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 and, and, and Mr. Booty Judge uh, uh, said was getting his marching orders from his donors in a wine cave. Now, if this is the thing. This is the this is the thing, bro. Look, I understand that some people like Mayor Pete, and and for some reason y'all do. I understand that. Look, here, here's the thing. We'll make sure we don't put any spice in your food. We <laughs> this isn't what we no, meant by crossing no, the right, line. No, 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 no seasoning. This is this is no seasoning. No. This is the thing. This is the thing. I want I want everybody to imagine this. If there was a story that came out from from Vermont that said Bernie Sanders demoted and then de- uh, tried to demote and or fire the first black police chief, and he demoted the first black police chief, he fired the whistleblower who listened to the tapes of the racist police officers and donors saying that they can't wait for white people to be in charge again, and then did not do anything when a black teenager was hung in the city. What would you what? How, what? how would how do you think the mainstream media would have covered that? Oh, they would have been all over it. They would have said they they they, they, they would have been all over it. They yeah. want him out, so yeah. they would have just been like tearing him down and. They, they've been trying to find things to to say Bernie Sanders is disqualifying or that he's out. Uh, John, uh, uh what was it uh, Jackson, the the black dude that's on MSNBC. He last year said Bernie Sanders was going to be out in August. He recently came back and said Bernie Sanders. Supporters only like him because of his charisma, basically, and it was the dumbest analysis. So it was the one of the dumbest. It was one of the dumbest things. It was one of the dumbest things I've ever heard in my life. I don't but but the thing, but the thing that makes me the thing that makes me angry, and this goes back to why we do the show and why we I want to expand the show, is because neutrality and objectivity is not the same. And when people and when we so well, could we talk about our bias all the time. The mainstream media also has a bias. They have a corporate bias. Mm-hmm. And they don't acknowledge it. They try to say it's they're being neutral. If those type of said stories or if Bernie said that he wants to pick a Republican as his vice president, they would really they would have oh, yeah. they would have if Elizabeth Warren would have said would have said this those things. They would have tried to destroy their candidacy from the jump. Yep. But you see who they like so they don't so they don't push back so i like, want to kind of peel back to and uh, you know we've got two two guests on the show who don't come on every week or yeah. whatnot and uh we're basically talking about the 2020 election i want to make sure i give y'all space to uh kind of talk about it yourselves like what do you what what is your kind of take going into this what do you think not even even just like about what's going to happen but uh kind of um you know what you see um, this, this, you know, this American election that we've got coming up this year. I mean, not just talking about President too. We're also going to, you know, Congress people, um, you know, people like John Holy running. We're picking mm. new state reps and all that. 
Shout out to AOC and the squad because they squad the squad the squad the squad's been the squad's been been they've been putting it down. This close to moving to her district just so I can afford. Just so you can afford. I was gonna say my my hardcore like you know, uh, super socialist self. I'm like, I don't trust anyone in the American government to be president, except for Ilhan Omar. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Matt, Matt. yes. That's, yes. that's it. That's I, I, I watch for Rashida. Yeah. I watch for Rashida. You know what I'm saying? And I, and, I, and, I, and I like AOC. I mean, Ayanna Presley, I think, would make a fantastic uh, Secretary of Treasury. Yeah. All right, so <laughs> I want to, like, you know, Jessica, Lucy, and then I've just got a couple things to cap it off with, but I really just want to deep dive, like, you know, what are y'all thinking going this year? Um, um, I'm seeing a lot of repeats of the last election, and I, I'm one of the people that looks into the future and like what you were just saying about Biden. If we're given that when the majority are showing to support Sanders, and they are, I'm seeing hopefully more of an uprise. Um, and I personally support Sanders. I am hoping that we get out and on our feet for John Holdley. Having Upton in the office another term is terrifying he has supported every war we had to fight against him for our our health care we have to keep reminding this dude who he represents because really he is bought out mm. um he still didn't clean up the oil right, right. That happened no he's he's like not that, cleaning up anything like and that. if we learned anything from the last election that we had for congress when they flooded it with candidates uh we need to focus we we need to get behind john everybody needs to as much as they say they want opt and out you need to show it and we also have i do believe tracy hall running for his seat from my understanding and again these are two openly gay people i'm queer and i support them 100 percent because i've worked with them and i know that they represent me and they represent my community i have seen them do a lot of hard work and we're who they're who we need to help us um they're who's going to listen to us locally I wouldn't necessarily put a hundred percent of my trust into these candidates personally. I don't trust politicians one hundred percent at all. For me, it's who's going to help the most oppressed, who's going to do the most for those that I care about, and to me, those are the candidates. And mm -hmm. I will mention just you know before we jump to you, uh, that's going to be very interesting seeing that play out this year because it's a, basically half the county commission is running for that seat. You've got Julie Rogers, Tracy Hall, and. Um, uh, Stephanie uh, Williams. Stephanie Williams. Moore. Moore. Well, she, she has a little diff different surname. Now, but oh, she got, she got married. Oh, cute. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, hey, girl. But yeah, congratulations. Yeah. So they are all—all yes. all three of them run for that seat. So that's going to be I'll very interesting to see how that plays out in local politics. I, I haven't really, you know, made a decision on who I'm going to vote for or anything yet. But just so I thought I'd bring that up real quick. Uh, so why did you pop um, so this is going to get real fun. Um, uh, Lawrence knows this because we've had this conversation fifty thousand times. But I'm going to try to do it more eloquently. As I said earlier, I'm not um, a believer of uh, really investing any time space or energy in any part of the u.s government um because it's built on white supremacy and capitalism which ensures that basically everybody loses even if you win everybody loses and the people that really really lose really really lose and most of the time they die um now I can get down with AOC. I can get down with the squad. I think they're great. I think um, them and people uh, like Greta Thunberg, people like, um, I forget her name, but the amazing woman who uh, ran for DA in Queens, she lost, but um, um, was uh, supported by AOC. Um, there are people coming out of the woodwork who are uh, ready to step into government and, and make change. I think that that's great. With that said, I do not believe, and I believe I have strong evidence of this, um, like the entire history of the United States, basically, um, that um, investing any time um, in um, supporting um, government officials or candidates 
who are representative either in in identity or in belief of uh, specifically white supremacy and or capitalism um, are not worth anybody's time and definitely not mine. Um, so perfect example for me is I think it's great that Bernie Sanders is not a racist or a fascist and he's a socialist and he's like a cool dude and whatever. Um, he's also still an old white man with money. Um, I think it's, you know, I think it's dope that, um, you know, Elizabeth Warren is a woman and would be a super kick butt first woman president. I definitely think, I definitely think that she would. Um, I personally would rather see her as like Secretary of the Treasury or something like yeah. that. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. that's where she fits best and where she knows what she's doing the best. Um, again, like I said, my, my main things are, are they going to take away my birth control, my health care? Are more people going to get shot? Are more people going to get bombed? I believe that if she were president, the same amount of people would get bombed, same amount of people would get shot, wouldn't have to worry about my health care, my birth control, or getting abortions taken away. You know, I'm good with that. I'm not... I'm not okay with that. That's a that's a band-aid that's falling off. So all of these candidates, and let it be said to basically all of the candidates of color, none of which that I could support, you know, as much as I could support Sanders, who I don't really support at all, even though it'd be cool, it'd be fine. You know, that's a that's a band-aid, that's fine. But um all, basically all of the candidates of color except Yang, who they're trying to continue to push out again who i don't even really support but let's just make it clear that within like a couple of months almost all of the candidates of color have gotten pushed out of the race or at the very minimum off the debate stage again these are candidates that i don't even support but let's just make it clear that none of this works none of this works whether it's a bernie sanders or a warren or a aoc or a ayanna presley none of this is going to work in this system if, if the squad existed outside of a white supremacist capitalist government, then I'm down. They, just give them the White House. Just give it to them and they'll figure it out. I'm fine with that. But they don't. They're doing the best they can in a system that's never going to work. So I don't support any candidate. I'm not sure if I'm voting. I did not vote last time. And I didn't really tell people about it because people have this thing about when you don't Why vote. Why did you vote? Right. Um, and I didn't tell people. Because I was terrified, and I'm no less terrified now. Um, I have hope in, and I really believe in, and an, am inspired by, especially AOC, just because I she I think she was one of the the the, the first member of the what we now call the squad. And if you're not familiar, we're talking about Ayanna Presley, um, Alexandria Ocasio Cortez, um, Rashida Tlaib, um, and Ilhan Omar. We're talking um, about the Justice Democrats. These are yes. these are these are. Is that all what we're calling them now? No, no, no. The, the, <laughs> or is that? their coalition or no, no, caucus the, the, thing? The, the, the reason why they got elected was because of a group that came out of 2016 which was called the Justice Democrats. It was right. created by so Ben Huger and, uh, and Kyle Kalinske and Troy ah. Kosh Chakrabarty and one other person who I'm forgetting the name of. Right. But they created... Yeah. So they come out of that, right? Yeah. So like I'm I'm down with them. If I was in their districts, I would vote for them. I used to live in Minnesota in Ilhan Omar's district. Um, um um so like, you know, I'm with it. If I could if I could vote for them, I would. Um but I don't believe that them by themselves in a government that again lives on the oppression of people like them and people who make less money than them and people you know who come from their neighborhoods i don't think i don't know how far they're gonna get with a five-person squad i don't know how far they're gonna get in a demo in, in a democratic party that looks really no different than the republicans they just smile more mm, um yeah. so i personally am a big fan of i don't say burning it down anymore but i am a big fan of dismantling the government that we have and the systems of oppression that we have and rebuilding them um so that people like aoc and people like bernie sanders and people like elizabeth warren and Julian Castro and even Andrew Yang and 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 Andy Argo and yeah. and Stephanie Moore who's Stephanie Williams now apparently and uh, you know everybody that wants to do the real work can really get it done. Yeah. Wow. Well, you know, I, you took a lot of the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> uh, it's just, I, I mean, it's kind of funny because like you know uh, our dynamic, you know, Lawrence, he's he's definitely like a different. 
democratic socialist. I'm more of a yep. like a I don't know if you say. Anarcho communist is redundant because the uh, overall goal of communism is basically anarchism. Right. That's a longer discussion. Yeah. But, anyway, <laughs> I think that's uh, the general undertone of almost anyone that comes on here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that ultimately, we all agree with burning the system mm-hmm. and rebuilding yeah. it new and making it where people we really support can actually be a part of it and, and get and some get dance. somewhere with it. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's. Ultimately, what I'm going to say is I, I love so, your show, Andy. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's a good time. It's a good time. Uh, so, uh, you know, I think I'll go back to, um, actually, you know, you mentioned you mentioned me as, like, a, a candidate. And one of, the, one of the things that I try to drive home is, like, you know, getting getting some nice people elected who are, like, real left or real progressive. That ain't enough. Nope. And something I want to leave the listeners with going into this year, there's a lot of different things that could happen this year. You know, maybe maybe Joe Biden becomes president, or maybe Trump gets reelected, or maybe uh, maybe um, Bernie's able to overcome all of the, the the corporate influence and the voter suppression in November and become. I honestly president. think he will. Just to just cap that point, I moment. think he yeah. will. It, and keep in mind, like a lot of people, all oh, voter suppression, election fraud. You know, uh, Obama proved in 2012. You can, if you get enough people to vote, you can overclock that. But it's kind of in the weeds. So. What I want to bring up is like whatever scenario happens, um, the only way that we're gonna get out of this system that literally is gonna kill everyone if we don't, is, we need to organize working people. We need a working people's revolution. And you know, if you're, you know, I say especially if you're a young person and you and you're down, you're feeling the burn. It's, I think it's a good opportunity for you to go and start flexing, building those those canvassing muscles and all that stuff. But do not put all of your hope on on one old white dude. <laughs> do not do it. The like, I mean, even he's savvy, he's savvy enough to say like, you know, not me, us. And that includes like, if if President Sanders does, is not like reeling in the military industrial complex, like he said, or or if uh, you know the 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 uh, fossil fuel industry is not. Because I want to tell you one thing. Whatever Bernie Sanders does not have the power to, uh, you know, basically seize the energy industries. That's gonna need a revolution. Yes. I mean, everyone, yeah. Yeah. Not, not. I don't mean like you know like oh make some signs and no no. I mean a capital R revolution, and that's yep. when you're talking about a general strike. Uh, you know, militancy, et cetera, et cetera. You have to take their money away. Yep. Mm-hmm. Hit them where it hurts. Yeah. So the mm-hmm. only way out of this. It, there's not going to be a presidential candidate. There's not going to be a state rep. There's not going to be um, a congressperson who's going to get us out of this. Only way we get out of this, we got to organize it's our us. way out. And with that, it's 8, 828. Yeah, I want, by the way, thank you. Thank you both so much for sticking around for some extra innings. Yeah, anytime. Um, this is going to be online. Um, should be either tomorrow or the next day. Until next time, all y'all. Uh, This has been the Hood Rat Strategist radio program. Keep on fighting for that revolution solution.